You just downloaded the show that was nominated Best Entertainment Podcast of 2013, only to be beaten by The Walking Dead. That's where Tony's at. Splash That's where Tony's at. Tony is a sneaking. Tony is a listening. Where Hey, everybody, this is Survivor Talk with D&D, and I'm Dwayne. And I'm David. <laughs> and we're just two best friends talking about the show we love. Survivor, tonight is a very special show. It's a first for my friend David and I. We have a winner, the winner of Survivor Kageyan, Tony Vlachos, Team TV. Say hello to everybody, Tony. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> We're just going to call him the head tonight. That's it, the head. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the just the head. head. <laughs> he's wearing the black shirt with the black background. He it's looks like he's in head. witness protection or something. I'm yeah. sorry. Sure. I'm in my spy shack right now, my man. He's in his spy. Oh, what? <laughs> spy shack, Tony Spy. <laughs> All right, I promise I won't do that the whole episode. Although, what 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 you should have done, Tony, was you should have had a, a a ringtone of the spy shack, which you know I can send you one. And then next time uh, you're around Probst, make your wife call you so she hears so he hears the song. He, he's in the kitchen right now, making himself something to eat. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he is. <laughs> That's my, that's my boy. Oh, well, everybody, we have uh, new viewers tonight. Tony brought some in. Hopefully you have tweeted, Tony, that you are on the air live with us right yes, now. I, yes, I did. If you haven't. Awesome. So we have some viewers who've never seen us before. Welcome to our show. We are just two best friends loving to talk about the show. And uh, we've got Tony. Tony, we're going to start off. We're going to get right into it. I'm not even going to tell people to go shop on Amazon and use our links. <clears throat> What did you expect from Survivor, and is that what and and is it what you thought whenever you got there? Um, it's exactly it's exactly what I thought, Dwayne. Uh, it's everything I hated. I hated the sun. <laughs> I hated the sweat. I hated uh I hate to socialize with people I don't really know. Um, right. I hated the the beach. I hated not brushing my teeth. I hated not washing myself with soap. I hated wearing the same clothes every day. Um, I hated everything. Everything you can imagine, I hated. It was is exactly what I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so what, what about, uh, like, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. What about like behind the scenes stuff? I mean, because you didn't know what to expect. You didn't know, you know, what the cameramen were going to be like and was it was that all you expected or did you like see behind the curtain and it kind of and yeah. it gave you a new sight insight into Survivor? Yeah, no, absolutely. Of course. I mean, you go there that that thing is grand. These people, I mean, there's like hundreds of people, especially at the challenges. Hundreds yeah. of cameramen machines, equipment, all kinds of stuff, and I would never expect that. The cameramen that were there at the beach 24-7, they, they were wearing Timberland boots, and if you go into the water, they're going right into the water with you. Oh, they yeah? Jeans with big socks on. They were getting – it was just incredible, incredible how they didn't care. I had cameramen chase me, falling down on the trails while they're chasing after me. I mean, <laughs> cameras going flying to the left. The guys were going flying to the right. It was unreal, these guys. They're great at what they do, man. And they kept up with me, believe it or not. That is awesome. In fact, th there was a point in the season where you just sprinted through the jungle. And no. the you can see the camera going like this. Yeah, that, 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 that's a point, point in the season that you saw on TV, but you got to see that 50 other points that I was yeah. running around like that that you Man. didn't see. Yeah. Hey, hey, so you talked about in, in some of your talks about how your, your preseason, your day one thoughts went out the window as soon as you got there. Oh, so immediately. So what we we got a lot of friends on Facebook and on Twitter and everywhere that really want to get on the show. What were your super fan preseason thoughts that went away? Just a couple of them. Well, just just right off the bat, I, I said to myself, you know what, I got to get into an alliance. Uh, right off the bat, first minute into it, and I did that. I got into an alliance with Cliff and uh, Cliff and Wu. The first two minutes that I sat on that beach, we shook hands. Me and Cliff, I looked up to him like in the sky, and I say, hey, Cliff, me and you together? He's like, yeah, we're together. <laughs> then, I look, then I looked at Wu. I said, Wu, us three together? Let's run the show together. We made a pact right then and then. And I was like, wow, so far, so good. My paper strategy is working. I got the social person, which was Cliff. I got the athletic person, which was Wu. I was great because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get somebody social, and I wanted to get something that was athletic that can win challenges and would be on my side with the voting block. That was my strategy on paper. So when I went in there, that's exactly what I did. Two days later, Cliff abandoned me, man. And that's when I said, you know what? This has got to go out the window. Everything from this point on has to be situational. And that's how I came up with my spy shack. I used to watch Cliff walking down the beach with Lindsay. 
hey, Wu, come over here, man. What's going on with uh, Cliff and Lindsay? Have you been watching that? He's like, yeah, they're just talking. All right, what are they talking? They're just hanging out. Okay, Cliff, what's going on, man? I see you with Lindsay. You spend a lot of time with Lindsay. Brother, stop being paranoid. You got to be cool. All right, Cliff, I'll be cool. Another hour later, he's still talking to Lindsay. I said, you know what? I got to build a spy shack. I built my spy shack. I go in it, and I listen to Cliff and, and uh, Cliff and Lindsay talking about, you know, who's got to go first, uh, what's the best case scenario for them to go ahead in the game. I went to Trish. I said, Trish, I, so me and you on the bottom. I mean, you've seen that one on TV. You've seen yeah. that part on TV. So I said, Trish, listen, I need your help. Believe it or not, I, I, Trish started helping me with the spy shack. She's like, what do I need to do? I said, Trish, go into the shelter. Start up a conversation about who needs to go if we lose challenges and then walk out the opposite side of the beach. She would go in there. She would start up a conversation and then walk to the other side of the beach where I was behind them. So once they seen Trish walk away from the shelter, they were like, all right, we're safe. We can talk now. And I would be right in the, shack, in the spy shack listening to them. And that's when I said, Trish, listen, th these guys are up to no good. And that's how that came about. So, you know, everything was situational there. I mean, if you go there with paper strategy, especially with numbers, when you're telling everybody, I got to make a move at, at, at number seven, I got to make a move at five, I got to make a move at nine, that doesn't work. Right. You got to do everything yeah. uh, You got to do everything situational in that game. My, my right. first thought of the thing that would throw you off is seeing that your tribe is six and that oh. your tribe is one of three. And that just, you know, that's not my first thought thinking I'm going into a survivor game with all new players. I would not have thought of three tribes. So I would think that would immediately change some of your thoughts. You're exactly correct. Right there at six, you're like, wow, you got nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide. So you right. need to make something. You got to make something good fast. And that's the thing with that. And that's why, you know, a lot of people say, you know, you got to stay loyal to your six to move ahead, right? Like when you're down to six, final six, you got to stay loyal. But this season was living proof that you cannot stay loyal within a six because you see what happens within a group of six. Two people are forming a stronger bond than the other two. Then you have three forming a bond with the half of the other two. So you, you're, you, you can't stay loyal to six too long because it's only a matter of time. Whoever pulls the trigger first, you're done. Yeah, because I would think in a group of six, the, one of the big rules is never be by yourself because if you're by yourself, then everybody else is talking about you or oh, playing without you. Well, Tony was by himself all the time looking for idols. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> See, the thing with me, when I first started, they knew I was a worker. So, you know, I would, I, would, I would start collecting wood, and everybody was collecting wood. There was points that I was in the camp, they saw me. I would just be moping around, dragging my feet, picking leaves off the tree, like, bored. And then as soon as I turned the corner where they don't see me, pew, I used to beeline right down to where I had to go build my spy shacks. I used yeah. to beeline to the areas. Like, I used to canvas the whole, the whole beach. I canvassed it in sections of where I want to check for the idol. And that's what I would do. So I would pretend like I'm bored. I'm just looking around, grabbing little twigs from the tree, breaking them, just peeling coconut stuff and husks. And then as soon as they couldn't see me, I used to run full speed, do what I got to do, search, search, search. <laughs> Five, ten minutes, 15 minutes later, 20 minutes later, I would race right back to camp. And as soon as I turned the corner, back to like walking real slow again. <laughs> so so hey. in their mind, they're looking at me and they're like, oh, you know, no big deal. He's just moping around, you know, no big deal. But I used to do I used to do a lot of damage with the time that I was gone, a lot. Yeah. So did the cameraman lean into you and say, "Hey, just let me know when you're gonna run." Absolutely. Just, just give us a head Absolutely. Up. Absolutely. They already. I I used to talk to them like on the beach in front of people. I say, "All right, guys, I'm gonna go all the way down by the water well. Just have somebody meet me there." And they would they would go on their microphones and coordinate it to meet me wherever I was yeah. going. They were meeting me already. They were already there waiting for me. Yeah. I used to just run everywhere. Hey, yeah. how many spy shacks did you five have? Five extra cameramen. Had five extra cameramen. <laughs> Yeah, it, that's exactly what they were saying, as a matter of fact. I had one by the fire, you know, where everybody sat down by the fire. I had yeah. one spy shack there. I had one behind the shelter. I had one by the tree mill, and I had one by the water well. So I, wow. had, I had all the places covered where people were would congregate and start talking, even myself. Like, I knew where I used to talk with people, and I was like, you know what? This is where everybody comes. So I had them all over the place. You know, I mean, it, it wasn't, you know, it was, it, was, it was productive. It was good enough. I heard enough to tell me, like, uh-oh, you're in trouble, you know? So right. it was good. It, it helped me. And, uh, and a lot of people say, how come we didn't see footage of that? And that, that's where you give production props. They sacrifice their footage so they don't jeopardize my game. If you have right. cameramen just there looking at me behind the shelter, they're going to give that away. So they sacrifice their footage just to let me play my game, which is great with production. I was very happy with that. Yeah, that, that's really good. That, what, that's awesome. Yeah. What, um, what, what was your reaction when Probe said, pick a leader? Pick a leader from your group. Did you back up as far as possible, or what did you do? I, I, you know what? I looked at Cliff, and I was saying, Cliff, man, you're the biggest dude here, man. You know, you're a man of stature. I mean, you 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 speak a leadership position. You speak of that, you know. And he was like, uh, uh I don't want it. I don't want it. So it was real simple. We just asked, who's a talker here? Who would like to represent the team 
and Sarah, Sarah was good with it. So, you know, we said, okay, great. This is easy. We didn't have to pick nobody. She, she volunteered pretty much. So that yeah. was pretty good for us. So, so I want to ask you, so, so you're on the truck ride, and you know that there's not just six in the game. But while you're on the truck ride, you are not allowed to talk, right? Yes. But you are scoping out the people on the truck. Yes. All right. Did you get a pretty good read on all those other five people? Well, not 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 necessarily a read. You know, I was looking at them and I was like, for one, we I'm sure we all knew that we were on the same tribe together of six. We right. knew that we had the same color buffs, we had the same color satchels, so we knew we were, you know, we're gonna be six, a, gr a group of six. So I'm right. not thinking about them. I'm just thinking like, what the hell's gonna happen here? I okay. knew there was 18 people from the Ponderosa, the pre pre game. We knew there was 18 people, so I was expecting to see returnees. You know, I was yeah. like, wow, they can have three returning players, and then I was like, damn, they can't have two returning players. You know. So then I figured there was going to be three teams of six, and you know I'm pretty yeah. sure everybody thought the same way. So I'm thinking to myself, oh man, I got to talk to, I got to go to Wu, and I got to go to Cliff right away, because like I said, I wanted the, I wanted the athletic guy, and the big guy. They asked me, what do I think he did? I didn't know him from nothing. I didn't know him from right. Adam. So I said to myself, it's either he's a circus clown wearing stilts underneath his pants, or he's some kind of basketball player. <laughs> yeah. He happens to be a basketball player. Yeah. Okay. Well, then what about whenever you all got on the beach and you saw the other two tribes? Did you immediately pick out certain people and and think anything about them that you needed to? No, nah, no, nah, nah. not me, no, nah, no. Nah. I was just so so you you get you get so blindsided by seeing Jeff and saying come on in guys and all yeah. this stuff and it's like you know what it was just like I, I was just soaking it in you know so at that yeah. point I really wasn't sizing anybody out and you can't really size anybody up unless they start talking to you you right. can't really get reads on people you know they gotta talk you gotta hear them talk. So instead you just said. Hey, we're ready to stomp on some beauty and brains. That, that, that's that's the first thing that came to my mind, you know. So that's what I said, and uh, and and look, it worked out in the end, right? That's right. That's right. Hey, and we get when you get the camp, unless you got something else you're gonna talk about there. But when you get the camp, the first big lie yeah. that you told uh, that we saw was the I'm a construction worker. Yeah. You know, right. tell why did that come? Was that part of your preseason strategy? Yes, it was not strategy, but pre pre game, I said to myself, you know what? Either people like cops and they respect them and they give them the props that they deserve. They're, they're strategic, they're tactical, they're sharp, they're quick on their toes, right? It's either that, all right, in that sense, I'll be a threat right away. Or they don't like cops. They, they run a red light, they get a speeding ticket, whatever it is. I hate cops. All these people that are selling drugs, all these people that are killing people, robbing people, and you're giving me a ticket just because I passed the red light for two Yeah, I'm giving you a ticket. You pass the red light, you get in a ticket. I'll deal with them later, but right now, I didn't do nothing wrong. You did. But people don't get it. They don't own it. They don't own their mistakes, you know. So I'm the bad guy for giving them tickets. So cops are not like. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to take a chance going into that game and having two people or even one person that doesn't like a cop and says, you know what? We got to get rid of this guy because he's just a you know, whatever. And I don't want to go into the game where people like cops and say, you know what? We got to get rid of him because he's a threat. So I said to myself, let me just say, let me just be a neutral. Let me just say I'm a construction worker. And that's what I went. So when I met Cliff and Wu, those were the first two people I talked to. I'm a construction worker. So what am I going to say now when Sarah comes up to me and says, are you a cop? I'm not going to tell I'm, I'm a cop after I just told everybody I'm a construction worker. So that's why I had to make that lie. So, you know, a lot of people see it and they're like, that's an unnecessary lie, but it was necessary because I already introduced myself as a construction worker to the rest of the tribe. Yeah. Yeah, but, what, yeah, yeah, but what, why couldn't you – I mean, because she obviously had a keen eye for other cops. Okay. You know? Okay. So, so why couldn't you just say, yeah, but I was kind of kind of keep that a secret. Why don't we keep that a secret between us and just I, go along with me? Dwayne, I didn't know who she was. Right, you don't trust anybody, right? No, no, I didn't know who she was. She didn't tell right. me she was a cop or nothing. She came up to me and says, are you a cop? Oh, no, I thought I, she told I, you. She, I thought she, she said, I'm a cop, and you're a cop. After I asked her, she, after the whole thing, she says, are you a cop? I was like, no, I'm not a cop. She said, tell me the truth. You're a cop. And I was like, no, I'm not a cop. I'm construction. Why? Why do you ask? And she's like, you just look like a cop. And then okay. I said, what do you do for a living, Sarah? And then she said she's a cop. So I'm saying to myself, this girl might be playing me now. Now she's saying she's right. a cop so I could admit to her I'm a cop. And I say, I got you. I knew you were a cop. You lied to everybody. So right. that's why, you know, I, you know, there was a reason for that. You know, I, I know people are looking at it like he didn't have to do all that. But I did have to do all that. Well, now yeah. we understand why you did it. Yeah, yeah. that's, well, that's early go. game foundation building. Once you start that storyline, you got to stick with that storyline until you can realize who you can trust, who you know won't go tell things to other people, and you gotta you got to build yourself and keep your story straight because if somebody gets a lie on day one, they are just gotta, they're going to be toast as soon as and, possible. And, and that's exactly right, and especially when the girls saw that the three guys were already talking. Sorry. 
So they, they already seen the three guys talking. They saw me, Cliff, and Wu talking. So they, I figured that they were trying to probe, try to see something so they could throw me under the bus. That's why I didn't really trust Sarah. I didn't know who she was. And then later she told me she was a cop. I thought about it for a split second. I said, you know what? I don't want to get played just yet. Right. You know, later on, you've seen how I came out with, you know, again, I used the truth as a negotiating tool. I knew, I knew, even if I wasn't a cop, I knew that it meant so much to Sarah to be a cop because from hearing her talk about her cop stories, she was really blue blood. And oh, I knew yeah. that even if I wasn't a cop, I still would have told her later on in the game, hey, listen, Sarah, I am a cop. Even if I wasn't, I would have told her that because I knew that's what she <laughs> wanted to hear. I never would have. I really would have. <laughs> that's great. I hadn't even thought about that. But I would have. You're right. Because I she was so into that. She was so into that that you could use that. And I would have said it. I, I would have told her I'm a cop. I didn't care. Whatever she asked me to prove to her, I would have, I would have done it. I would have showed her how to lock somebody up. <laughs> what she wanted to prove to her, even if I wasn't a cop. So anything else happened on that first day that they didn't show us that you want to tell us about before okay, we get the, to the, the first day, the first day I'll tell you a funny story because since Trish wants to throw me on the bus and tell everybody she was peeing in my spy shack, so I'm going to throw, uh, throw her under the bus right now. All right. The first day or the second day, um, <laughs> I was looking for an idol inside a tree. There's a, there was like a big crazy tree and I was looking for an idol inside of there. And then somebody taps me on the shoulder, and I look up, and Trish is like, what are you doing? And I start screaming, chicken! There's a chicken! And she's like, what's going on? I said, hurry up, go around. The chicken just ran through the tree. So she goes around the bushes, and I'm with my left hand looking through the tree for the idol, and with my right hand, I'm picking up stones, and I'm throwing the stones over my head, <laughs> and they landing in the bushes, and she's screaming, I hear it running! I hear it running! <laughs> so so I, got, I got that lie off with Trish. I, I, I got that off. She didn't go back and tell people I was looking for an idol. That's awesome. Later, so later on, we the you know the rice uh what is that uh whatever that rice sack is that they give us that uh it's the container that holds the rice yeah, in yeah the rice right. it has a medallion on the top of it it was a wooden right. pop down medallion that I thought was an idol right. so what I I do I remove that idol and I put it in my pocket and I'm saying to myself hold up there's no clue there's no rules to it there's nothing engraved on it saying it's an idol it's probably nothing. So what do I do? I go up to Trish and say, hey, Trish, I know you're on the bottom. I know I'm on the bottom, but they're probably going to go after you first. I got an idol for you. <laughs> and she looks at me, and she's the happiest girl in the whole wide world. She's like, oh, my God, Tony, you are so awesome. You're the best. Thank you so much. She takes that She takes that whatever idol. She puts it in her bag. So then I go up to her. I say, Trish, you got to let me know what's going on in the game. Look, I helped you with the idol. So then she tells me, listen, Lindsay and Sarah, they're looking for idols. And I'm like saying to myself, oh, really? So now Trish is giving me information because I gave her that fake idol. <laughs> so then she takes me to a spot where, where Sarah and Lindsay were digging through tree roots by the water well. And I'm saying to myself, wow, why are they digging through the roots? Which leads me to my special idol later on in the game. But right. that moment right there is what made me start looking through, start digging through tree roots. So now I'm thinking that Trish tells Sarah and Lindsay that she read a clue and it's there's something buried. And then Trish was like, no, Tony, I didn't tell him nothing. So for whatever reason, we later found out Sarah and Lindsay were digging through those tree roots because they saw that the earth was, was touched. Somebody yeah. was digging through it previously. So mm -hmm. that's what they thought. But I thought that they're lying to me. I thought that they really knew that there was an idol hidden underneath some kind of tree root, and they had uh -huh. to dig for it. So that's why every single tree from that point on, I dug from every single root and climbed all the way up to the trees. From the bottom up, I checked it all. And that's why I was digging looking for the idols. Right. So how long till Trist realized that you gave her a block of wood? So just like all my lies, when I, when I know that there's a point that it might come back to bite me, I come clean with it. So I went up to Trish maybe, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, it, must, it, it might have been on day seven. I went to her and I say, hey, Trish, listen, I've been thinking a lot about this. I don't think. i got to see that idol again. And oh. then she took the idol out and I looked at it and I said, you know what? There's no writing on it, Trish. It had no clue on it. I don't know if it's real. But let's just hold on to it just in case. So now I came out of that lie. So yeah, if, even yeah. if she finds out it's fake, she's not going to say that I played her, you know? So I got out of that lie like that. Yep. <laughs> hey, all right, so you had something with Wu and Cliff. You had something with Trish, no matter how fake it was or not. And you kind of had a conversation with Sarah. Did you ever talk to Lindsay? Did you ever reach out just to make a bond there? Yes. Well, Lindsay, see, what happened was I heard Lindsay and Cliff talking. I, for 72 hours straight, I must have lost five pounds, those five – from rubbing sticks of bamboo together trying to start a fire. And right. You know what I'm listening to that spy shack? Lindsay <laughs> telling Cliff, Tony's using up all the bamboo trying to make fire. And I'm like, are you serious right now? <laughs> Cliff, Cliff tried to make the fire five times. Wu tried to make it five times. I tried making it 500 times. Yeah. Okay. 
So I was busting my butt out there, and she's complaining about that we're wasting the bamboo. Can you imagine? So at that point, like, I really didn't, we didn't click. Just, you know, we didn't click. She didn't bother me too much, but she, we just didn't click. And chemistry in that kind of game is huge. I had Everything. chemistry with Trish. I had chemistry with Wu. So, and, and if you don't have that chemistry, you really can't go nowhere in that game. And me and Cliff didn't have the chemistry. We were both people. And when we voted him out, everybody's, like, telling me, why would you vote Cliff out? That's the person you want to take to the end. See, the, the, the problem with that is... You, Cliff is not a person you take places. He's a person that takes you places. He's not going to let you take him and carry him. He's a right. strong alpha dude. He's a very aggressive guy, although he's calm and collected. Hey, so if y'all had lost the first challenge, who was going to go? Had you already talked about that? No, we, we, we didn't talk about that because, again, it was me and Trish. We, we were down low. And remember, I found a, okay. an immunity idol, so I still had the idol over there. So I would have to play that idol because I thought I – thought I, and I was right. Cliff – Wu and Lindsay were stronger than me and Trish. And Sarah was good with Lindsay. So those four would have probably voted out Trish. So yeah. I would have to protect her with the idol. Would you have protected her? Absolutely. 100. Yeah, you see me with LJ. I would definitely use it. When, you, know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people have to understand, you're not helping that person. You're helping yourself. When you make a move like that right. to protect somebody, you're really helping yourself. So... Go ahead, David. Well, uh, my next thought is when you did come clean to Sarah, what was it that got you got you into that spot where you wanted to come clean with her? Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, so a lot of people saying that why 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 now with the lie with Cliff? I knew that I wanted to target Cliff. I knew that there was going to something was going to happen because the the brains tribe was getting decimated. So I knew it was only a matter of time before they shuffled us, they swapped us, did something with us. So that was my point right then and then to say, "Hey, listen, Sarah, this is what's going on. I want to come clean with you. I'm going to tell you I'm a cop." Because I'm hearing a lot of stuff about you that Cliff and Lindsay, they want you out. I don't want to see you go out. Because, you know, Sarah and I, we talked. We had good conversations there. We clicked. And so that's why I came up with that. Because just in case we did swap, which we did, I knew I had Sarah on my side. And I knew we could oust Cliff. And that All was right. the only reason. And I did that right before the last challenge, that before the swap. Because they didn't know it was going to be a swap. But I'm saying to myself, you know what? I can't tell Sarah this if we went to a challenge and we lost. Because then it'll look like I'm just, I'm just nervous. I'm desperate. Right. And I'm making a lie up. So I said, you know what? Right before a challenge, just in case there's a swap, and it happened to be a challenge, but there was no swap. The swap happened later on. But it was just perfect timing, as far as I was concerned, to go to Sarah and try to get Sarah on my side. So now I have Sarah. I have Trish. Sarah had Wu. So I was golden. Now it was us four in the majority in that little six alliance, and it was Cliff and Lindsay on their own because of that lie to Sarah. I, lo I love how you originally got Cliff and Wu. So that was a three-guy strong alliance. Yes. And then you picked up two of the women by looking out for their best interest. That, and that's right. exactly what I did. Exactly. I told Trish, I'm protecting her with the idol. I told Sarah, I'm protecting you because I heard what Cliff said about you. So on the show, they didn't show you talking to Trish about the spy shack. Whenever you tell her, you know, I'm, I'm building something, I'll let yeah. you know what it is later. They, they showed that on day four. But did that happen earlier? Yeah, you you know what? Um, no, no. I, wherever they, sh yeah, you know what? I, I'm not too sure. I don't remember the dates yeah, right now. Uh, but but yeah, see, they, I guess they couldn't show the footage because there was one point too. Trish burnt me on this one. She, I told Trish, Trish, go in there and start the conversation, then run out. This was another time where everybody was in there now, and yeah. I'm going in my spy shack. I must have been there three hours, and Trish was talking about chocolate. I'm like, Trish, what are you doing? <laughs> but she gets carried away. She was talking about chocolate and, and, and all kinds of food. And I couldn't believe she was doing that. And I was still I was getting eaten alive by bugs laying down. And the spy shack, a lot of people were saying, what is it? It looks like a twig. What it was, it was like a secret compartment. You had the shelter with the wall, and then I built another wall outside of that shelter wall. So I had a nice, a nice about two feet wide shelter, another wall, a false wall. And then cover a shelter. So I was inside that pretty comfortably, but I was getting chewed alive. Yeah. I was getting I eaten up. I can't believe nobody found that. I, I, mean, I mean, you know, it just looks like a bunch of rubble. You know, it just looked like a bunch of just twigs and branches. I know, but you had to be nervous when, like, somebody like Wu is just kind of moseying along around the camp. Oh, I I what's would've, behind I, this twig? <laughs> I'm sure I would have came up with something. I would have said, yeah. you know what? Say, so, Wu, I, this I, is a safe house for you. I built yeah, you a safe I, house and because I'm worried about you. That's exactly what I probably would have said. I'm glad you found that. I built this just for you. Yep. It was a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Was, yep. So on day six, Sarah kicks butt on the challenge on that puzzle. Remember that? Yeah. The, the, I cut my toe. Yes. Oh, gosh, yes. yes. <laughs> That's also the day you find the clue. Now, was anybody else even looking 
for a clue? Um, not that, I, not, not that I knew of. I knew everybody was looking for idols. We were all looking for idols, all yeah. of us. So I knew everybody was looking for idols, so they were aware that there's an idol, especially when Trish says I had a choice of an idol or an extra bag of rice. So everybody knew there was an idol out there. Cliff was looking. Sarah and Lindsay were looking. Everybody was looking. I was looking. Wu was looking. So with the clue, then I said to myself, you know what? At, you know, historically, you always see there's some kind of a clue in a reward challenge. So when we won the reward, I'm already thinking, please, let me get to these stuff before everybody starts getting their hand in the pot. And sure enough, I went through everything, and I found it in a little bait box where the fishing thing was. And right. I found it. I took it, and I was so happy. And that was literally an hour after I cut my toe and got five stitches on my toe. I went to medics, and they gave me five stitches, and they say, Tony, the only way that you're not going to get pulled out of this game is by not getting it infected. And the only way you're not going to get it infected is by keeping it dry and keeping it clean. <laughs> hour later, I find the clue, and the, 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 the stupid idol's inside the water. So yeah. they go keeping it dry. I jumped right in there, stitches and all. So, but it was worth it though. I found yeah. the item. I'm so happy. Yeah, you I were. So I, and, you were, and I quote, "King of the jungle." At that moment, oh my God, I was so happy, Dwayne. Man, you heard the noises. I was so oh, happy. Oh man, that's funny. Was, I, I I picture when Trish talks about what she chose for the tribe. I picture her saying, turning around and saying, "Yeah, I chose this rice instead of that idol." She turns around to pick it up and she turns back. Everybody's gone. Because everybody's all looking for that idol. Absolutely, absolutely. That's how it was. Everybody was looking. I got the but, but but were they smart enough to look in the reward stuff? They, I don't think they did. I mean, I don't think they did, or else they would have found it. You know. Right. But there was I, nobody I, even near you when you seemed to pick it up out of the reward. It's like everybody was still celebrating, and you're like, "Where's the clue? Where's the clue?" Yeah, no, no. Exa oh man, hey, Dave. Let me tell you, I found clues when we won the coffee and donuts. I found a clue in the in the in the coffee thing. Everybody right. was eating donuts, and I was like, hey, guys, taste this donut. It's delicious. And I'm passing the donuts around, and my right hand is going through the coffee grinds looking for clues, and I found it in the coffee <laughs> with, Jeremiah, with Jeremiah and Spencer. Yeah. So I tried on the first robe. I was like, ah, oh, this, this robe is a little too small. <laughs> I took it out. Nothing was in it. I took the second one. I tried that one. I said, oh, no, this is way too big. And then I tried the third one, and the clue was in the pocket. <laughs> totally. So you're doing Goldilocks. You're pulling Goldilocks at the spa. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, like I was always looking, man, always looking. And that's why I found them. I found the clues. And as long as I kept finding them, they didn't know about the clues. So they weren't going to look. You know what I mean? They weren't right. going to start looking. You know, they didn't find the first two, three rewards. They're not going to keep looking. So right. I kept looking and looking and looking. I found them all. And as a matter of fact, that clue that I found with the robe, that was the idol Spencer already had. And Spencer wow. knew he had it. But then yeah. he saw me going in the river. It was like dirty. It was like dirty, stagnant water back there where that clue was. And I was in there for days, two, three days at a time looking for that stupid idol that he already had. Yeah. <laughs> and he's probably watching you going, ha, ha, ha. No, and he told me that. He was like, Tone, I was so happy watching you. And then I was like, thanks, jerk. You know I had a yeah. big wound on my foot. I could have got it infected. He was he was like, oh, I wish that would have happened. I hey, could have died. Before, yep. you, before you played that idol on AJ, uh, LJ, AJ, LJ, LJ later yeah. on, um, did you ever share with anybody that you had that idol? Nobody, nobody. That's why everybody called me a blabber. Oh, Tony goes and blabbers everything. No, no, I don't blabber everything. I only blabber what I want them to know. I didn't want them yeah. to know about my idol. Nobody knew about the idol. As a matter of fact, I don't know which point we're at now, but I have a story about the idol too, how it came out of tribal during mm -hmm. the merge. Go but, ahead. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to keep jumping around, so we, we'll keep moving in order. All right. Well, we're on. We're about day seven. Horrible storm. That's when that huge storm came. This is yep. after you told Sarah. You went and did, so then that day seven and. Uh, I was at, let's see, did you think it was a risky move telling Sarah Cliff had it out for her? I kind of felt like that was a risky move because that could have come back and bit you. All right, let's go through a scenario. Tell me how it would have bit me. Well, she could have went. How close and... were Sarah and Cliff? Yeah. They, 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 they were to well, Sarah and Lindsay were close, right? And Cliff was, cl Cliff was close to Lindsay. So they're pretty close. But not, you know, again, you, you don't trust nobody fully there. So, right. you, know, you, keep, you know, you talk with people and you, and you form bonds, but it doesn't mean you can trust them just yet. So By then, was Cliff known as a celebrity? Was, um, yeah, yeah. He already told he told everybody from day one when Wu said, "I'm not gonna lie, I got your basketball cards." Yeah. So they everybody knew he was a basketball guy. All right, so I'm gonna say it wasn't risky because one, he just came out and said, "Yes, I am a cop, and here's why I didn't tell you I was a cop, but I'm trying to tell you right now that you're in trouble because they're talking about you." So who's she gonna believe, the celebrity that's out there playing, or this guy that just just came out and told him flat out, "Hey, I actually am a cop. You you figured me out. I'm telling you the truth." And now I'm trying to tell you something that's going to help you in this game. Yep, but not even that. Even if he wasn't a celebrity, just a regular Joe Smo, just like I am, we're all there to lie. So you know, if you're going to go up to somebody, you're going to jeopardize your own game by starting trouble by saying, hey, listen, Tony just told me that. 
you can't benefit from that because the person's not going to admit it. Cliff's not going to say, oh, yeah, you know what, Sarah, you're right. Tony caught me. I was talking about you trying to get you out. Nobody's going to admit it, no matter how truthful it was. You understand? So there's no way you can go back and confirm that. You can't do it. It's kind of right. like the two criminals who are going to tell on each other. The first one that steps up is the one that gets the opportunity to be believed first. You're right, because the other one's going to say, okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to lie about it. I'm going to deny right, it. I'm going to counter. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to counter it. I'm going to deny it. So that's why there's no way Sarah, and Sarah's a smart girl. She's not, she knows that. She knows she can't go up to Cliff and start trouble because you're going to open up a can of worms. So now she's stuck in a place where it's like, damn, who do I believe? And not only that, you just started trouble within the camp. And then yeah. I'm going to go to Cliff and say, Cliff, I never said that. She's just starting trouble, man. We got to get rid of her. <laughs> and that's what happens. <laughs> so if Sarah crazy. turns into interrogator, you got the end around to go back to Cliff. Remember me, Cliff, from day one? Dude, we had that alliance, and Absolutely. this girl's trying to cause trouble. And I'm going to tell him. I'm going to say, she came up to me, accused me that I was a cop, and being that I didn't tell her I was a cop, she got mad at me, and then she came to, she made up that lie with you, trying to get me out. We got to get rid of her. She's a bad seed. Get rid of her. And that's what happens. That's when that day one alliance comes in so handy. You got to make that good first impression. And, and, and you know what? It, 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 you you might think that, but again, Cliff and Lindsay. They, if I didn't make that spy shack, I mean, would I have known that Cliff and Lindsay turned on me? I wouldn't have known probably. Right. Yeah. You know. So I see I seen them walking up and down the beach, but again, he was like, "Yo, Tone, just chill out, man. We, we, there's six of us here. We only we're hanging out." You know. Right. So the spy shack really helped you during this game. It, it helped. It helped me in that point. It did help me big time. It helped me with the dreffer later on. It helped me by the fire. Uh, we'll get into that. Right. It, it it seems like the next time you play, assuming they invite you back, you're not going to be able to pull off the spy shack. Everything's situational, Dave. Maybe, maybe Dwayne. Everything's situational. You know, people know that there's clues and rewards, but how many people looked at it? You know, not many people looked at it, right? Okay, but I, if I'm on the season with you, guess what I'm looking for? That's you. That's, that's, that's you, Dwayne. Not everybody's like you. Not everybody's like me, man. He's going to have a spy tree house instead yeah. of a spy shack. Yeah, that's right. He's going to, yeah. Don't, and don't one of the things, it. before we get too far in, we're, we're like getting up to day eight, but I, I, one of the neat things that I heard you tell Poverty on the first one, I didn't watch the uh, second one, the Survivor Live one, but the one that you did right after the finale with, with Poverty, you told her that you had two rocks Oh that yes. You would go to the beach. Huge. Uh, this this was just I had never thought of this, but this was like probably the greatest idea you had the whole game. Because Huge. That, I mean, did you that was what day did you come up with that? Day 1. Man, day was, 1. My wife and I talked about it before we went out there as a matter of fact. Again, it, it's not a strategy, but we talked about it. She's like, "Tony, listen, if you need you need to console somebody, grab a rock as soon as you get on the island." Two rocks. One represents me. One represents our baby daughter. And I did just that, and I carried it in my pocket. And every single night, I would put them out and say, "Honey, this is what's going on out here." Right. And I used to talk to them, and then I used to give them a kiss good night, put them in my pocket, and they were out of my mind from that point on. But that really, you know, as as ironic as it sounds, it did keep my sanity. You know, you would yeah. think I'm insane for talking to rocks, but well, no. I mean, look at and and I know it's a movie, but look at Tom Hanks in the movie Castaway. Oh, Wilson. Yeah, I mean that that in, in in that movie that volleyball or whatever it was kept him sane, and 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 it allowed him to talk and to think things through. It's just a great idea, and I bet more it's, people will start doing that. I know I would do it now that I heard you say it. Dwayne, it's beautiful because those two rocks are the only ones that you know are not going to turn your back on you. And as a matter of fact, um, I don't know if you ever get to talk to Spencer, but uh, they it, it didn't make the air. But I used to talk to my idol. At 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, if the cameraman was dozing off, I would push him, shake him, and say, come with me. We got to go. And then he would follow me. I would unbury my idol, and I would sit there and talk to my idol and say, listen, idol. I said, you're all I have. I'm all you have. You know that, um, <laughs> what is that, the, the, the soldiers, whatever that soldiers thing is, where I said, I said, this is my idol. Without me, you are nothing. Me without you is nothing. Yeah. You ever heard that before, the soldiers' <laughs> yes. Uh, story? Yes. That's yes. what I used to tell my idol at night. So I used to talk to my wife, my daughter, and my idol. Now, does your wife know you have an affair with an idol? <laughs> she, she knows because it's here with us. The yeah, idol you, you brought the idol home to meet your wife. Absolutely. <laughs> so, do you still have those those, those two rocks? I still ha I still have the two rocks. Absolutely. That is awesome. Yep. I, I, that's just a great story. See, when I've taught myself through playing a season, I always imagined that one thing that would get me through is having one person, one person that I'm close enough to that we could walk away from the shelter and talk about family. And talk about life, and that to me would keep you grounded to a degree, almost like a family visit. But I mean, that's 
but at the same time, that person can't win if I'm going to win. You know, right. in the in the end, that's going to be somebody that could use it against me. They could use it in a different way to tell somebody else. You know, it's who can you actually actually trust in this game? You can trust rocks because they're with you all the time and they're not going to tell anybody anything. Right. That that was me and Trish, Dave. That was exactly me and Trish. We talked about our families. We talked about our our our, our everything, just everything we talked about. And that's what makes that game so evil. Is the hardest part is to backstab the people that you formed real true bonds with. Because right. there's nothing strategic about forming a bond with somebody. That's real, man. And that's right. what hurts. Yeah. That's yeah, what hurts. That, that, that's why you could tell it hurt whenever you voted her off. Trish hurt. L, LJ hurt me too because he was a nice guy. I really liked him a lot. But Trish was real. Trish was right. genuine. It was a genuine bond we formed. It was real. And I hurt her, you know, and it sucked. Yeah. Was, you were with her for 38 game. You were with her for 37, 38 days. Y'all were on the same tribe the whole time. Horrible. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. so. So Wu and I was too, but you know, again, Wu and I, we didn't, we didn't have that same bond. You know, we we had game bond. You know, we talked more about the game, strategic things. But me and Trish were like bonds, like real bond. You know, especially when she was in the beginning. You know, we were both in the outs. You know, we started from the bottom. You know, it's not like we went into there with power. Nobody gave us power. We had to work for it. You know. Yep. Wow. Hey, so were you in on the plan to throw that challenge to get rid of Cliff? No, they never told me. Sarah never told me about it. Um, I, I didn't know. I had no idea about that. That was all a surprise. Would you have yeah. gone along with it? No, absolutely not. There was a point, as a matter of fact, with the with the Cliff vote off, where uh, we went to the Solana when we did the swap, and Cliff mentioned that to me. He was like, "Hey, Tony, what do you think about throwing this challenge? Because we got to get rid of LJ." And I yeah. said, "Cliff, absolutely not. There's no way I'm throwing a challenge, man. That's stupid to throw a challenge. We got to get rid of numbers. Yes, we do, but let it just come naturally. We're not forcing that." So what happened was, Cliff said, "All right, Tony, I agree with you. No problem." When we lost that challenge, I thought in my head that Cliff purposely threw that challenge to try to get rid of LJ quick. That's yeah. why I was like, how did that happen, man? How did that happen? I was so upset. Right. And I, oh, and yeah, I you did. You did that right afterwards, yep. Yeah, and I shared that with LJ, and I said, and I told LJ, I said, yo, LJ, man, I think Cliff tried to throw that, man, because he did mention it to me. And then when I told him I was not going for it, he said, no problem, we won't do it. So I started saying to myself, all it takes is one person to throw that, to make that challenge kaputs, and that's Cliff. All he had to do was lift that pole higher, and the front nose dives, and that's what it felt like. It felt like he was pulling that so high up where me and LJ couldn't control the front. We were struggling to pick up that nose, and meanwhile, I'm watching skinny little Spencer <laughs> lifting up that nose like it's nothing. So that's why we started saying it. It was like a conspiracy theory that I think you know Cliff has something to do with throwing it. But again, it's it, I guess it's common sense that Cliff is taller, so his right. his grip on it is going to be much taller than ours, you know. Right. But me yeah. and LJ, we look like rag dolls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we, and that's why we thought that you know Cliff has something to do with that. But you know, we talked to Cliff after the game. He was like, absolutely not. All right. Yeah. So going back to day eleven, whenever Sarah and the rest of the tribe was trying to throw that that challenge, but Brain was so horrible that they couldn't. <laughs> How wow. did you and Lindsay end up sitting out? Who, me and Lindsay? Yeah, you and Lindsay sat out on the on that challenge. Was that something that the others got to happen because they knew they were going to try to throw it? Well, it's pretty much it was pretty much implied. They were like, Tony, you know, you have a wounded toe. You know, we just you you could sit out. We're better swimmers than you are because I told everybody I'm not a strong swimmer. As a matter of fact, I barely know how to swim. I just right. started taking lessons like a month before I went on the show. So I so they said, Tony, you just sit out this one, and Lindsay volunteered to sit out that one. So it was, um, you know, maybe it was strategic on their part to sit yeah. me out so they could try to throw it. But Trish didn't even tell me they were throwing the challenge either. <laughs> so, Trish you know, I, I mean. Yeah, say, hey, you can't completely trust Trish, so don't feel too bad about voting her off. Yeah, oh, come on. Nah, it's different, man. <laughs> it's different. But, but, and, you, and you heard me on the sideline how I was screaming. I was like, Cliff, come on, Cliff. Throw yeah. it in, get it in. I was, I was like the loudest person out there cheering to win that challenge. <laughs> yes. All right, so the next day, it is time to mix up the tribes, and Sarah is left alone. Were you a little concerned about that? Absolutely, you know, because I, I just formed a strong four. It was me, Trish, Sarah, and Wu. Remember, with that lie with the yeah. clip, it was perfect. Yeah. So, And then when they took her away, I was like, oh, man, I was bummed. First thing I do, I tug on LJ's pants. So when we're sitting there, and LJ's on my team, I tug on his pants so I could let him know, hey, listen, I'm sending you a signal, man. I need to talk to you. And I wanted to make sure that I talked to him before Cliff got to him. And that was to tell him, hey, listen, Cliff's a bad seed, man. We got to get rid of this dude. LJ's going, a lot of people tug on my pants. Yeah. Why are you doing this? Well, 
Uh, and I, what and kind I, of signal are you trying to send me, Tony? And, and, and you know, and that and that sets it up for later on inside the tribe where he didn't even play his idol. That's how comfortable he was with me. I know oh, editing yeah. shows that I was, you know, I had mixed feelings over it, but right from that, from, right from the swap, I was already, I already knew what I was doing. Okay, was it awkward at camp though? Trish like loving on LJ, drooling over him. Was just... it really like that? Nah, yeah, was... nah. Nah, oh, come on. Trish, yeah. Trish was Trish at that at that point. Trish was playing the game. She knew what she had to do. Me and her would go and I say, "Hey, hey uh, Trish, work your magic on Jeffra, and I'll work my magic on LJ." And that's exactly what she did. She was she was that was just all her game. That was all game. She did like she did say, you know, um, LJ was a good looking guy and everything. You know, when we were at our camp, she was like, "Wow, LJ is a good looking guy." But that had nothing to do with it. Trish Trish was playing the game. She knew what she was doing. All right. Okay. We have a question from somebody on the Google Plus. And says, did you? And I'm not even sure where, when, or where he's talking about. So if if you can help me out, that'll help. Did you really not want to vote out Cliff when Trish approached you? And how different do you think the season would have been if not for that move? Do you know when he's talking about? Yes, I know. Yeah, that's exactly the the, the move where Cliff was telling me, let's throw the challenge. Yes, so okay. We can get rid okay. of LJ. Yeah, and then I'll, and then it looked like Trish was convinced to me, which she was, because there was a point where I wanted to get Cliff out, and then I'm starting to say to myself, you know what? I can't let Cliff get to the merge because Cliff is very influential. He he can talk to people. He has this this aura about him that people gravitate to him. It's maybe because it's his career, you know, what an NBA player. But I did not want Cliff to make the merge because he was going to corrupt the merge against me. He was going to corrupt the tribe to get rid of me. It was either me or right. Cliff at that point. So uh, when 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 we went there, when we went to the Solana, Trish was telling me, Tony, you know, we have to get rid of Cliff. You know, we have to get rid of Cliff. And I was saying to myself, I know Trish. But then next day, I was like, you know what? Maybe we should get rid of LJ. And that's the footage that you saw. Right. You know, it's a, you know one, one moment I'm talking about, let's get rid of Cliff. We have to. The next second, I say, let's get rid of LJ, and they use that. So, yeah, I, I was already pretty certain that I wanted Cliff gone. But, uh, but yeah, I did say there was there was some moments in the game that I was like, you know what? It's best to get rid of LJ now because he's going to be a force to reckon with later on. Cliff right. making the merge, individual challenges, I was not scared of that at all. I mean, right. just, you know, he's a big dude. But it doesn't mean, you know, you've seen the challenges. This means nothing. Braun means nothing in Survivor. It just has to do with the challenges. And Cliff would not have been good at those challenges, sitting on that pyramid and a doghouse, whatever they call it, right. in the water. Yeah. Right. Balancing all of that, he had no chance. How so, was he holding up physically? Because a lot of people wonder about big, big people. Nah, Cliff was good. He was good. He was doing his thing. He was conserving his energy. He wasn't running around like a nut like I was. So, you know, he was he, he was conserving his energy. He was good. He was, he was, he's, a, he's an athlete. He's in great shape. And now, did you get a sense when you were talking to LJ after the merge that he had an idol? No. Did you get any sense? None at all? Nope, not at all. I kept thinking Morgan had the idol because, you know, everybody at Trish had a, it was either an idol or the rice. So when I found out Morgan went there first and then LJ said, yeah, we saw her in the water, that's when I was saying to myself, all right, LJ played me. He made it sound like Morgan had it because there was, remember when we did the, the raid? Remember yeah. the day that I that I framed oh, yeah. Jeremiah with? That is well, coming that up. Yes. For, yeah, that clue was for us, and I and I was happy to tell my tribe, hey guys, look, I got a clue for our for the idol. We were in that water, and LJ was just looking at me, laughing. I was in that water again <laughs> for two days, three days yeah. for that idol. And we couldn't find it, and he was like, you know what, Tone? I think Morgan must have it. And I was like, you know what? You're right. She got it. You know? <laughs> so he played me. Yeah, he did. Yep, he got me. <laughs> oh man, so Cliff goes home. And that really starts the ball rolling for Lindsay quitting. Although I thought it was because of her and Trish. I, I kind of felt like Trish pushed Lindsay over the edge. Now I know you're going to be partial towards Trish, but what was that night like when Trish went after Lindsay and Lindsay and she really went after each other? Well, here's the thing. I mean, that, that, uh, that hatred was brewing since day two. Two or day three, you even seen when Trish told her, "Hey, how come you don't chip in and go get some wood?" Yeah. So again, Trish, you know, me, I was working on the fire. I told Trish, I said, "You know what? The nerve of this girl to say that I'm wasting the bamboo when I'm trying to benefit the tribe." So you know, from that point on, she was like, "I know, dude." And then it gave more attention to Lindsay. We were paying more attention to Lindsay, not really contributing. So you know, and Trish was arguing with her. And then again, chemistry. They had no chemistry. They didn't have nothing in common. So right. uh, I guess I guess what happened with the with the Cliff thing? I mean, yeah, Trish did was was pushing her, and I told Trish at one time. I said, Trish, just slow down a little bit. You know, I, we we got the numbers, we're good. We'll get rid of her next time. But she just said, Tony, I just want to clear the air, and she did. She said, I'm clearing the air, and I want to move forward with us. You know, 
But uh, Lindsay, Lindsay, from day one, she was having a hard time. She had an infection in her ear where her balance was off. As a matter of fact, you've seen her one challenge where we had the blindfold. You uh -huh. saw how she was falling around. She didn't know where she was. Yeah. She had some kind of yeah. She had something wrong with her ear, so she was having a bad time. She had problems with her stomach where she was sick to the point where Jeff had to go see her right before the very first challenge on day three. On day three, she was she was going to get uh, medevaced out of the game. She was laid out. She was laid out on the ground and she couldn't even move. So you know wow. she was having a hard time from day one, and now yeah. she lost her closest ally. She yeah. had an ear infection. She had everything just going against her. She was like, you know what? I'm done. She was soaked and wet. She lost her toenails. She was like done. You know, it's like that's it. You know. Right. And so I wrote the song, I Just Want to Take You Down. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, it was, a it was a totality of everything around her. Yeah. A you know, totality. And, 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 that's pretty good. That, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it, and it was because, you know what, and she's saying to herself, who do I got now? You know what I mean? Who, where am I going? Am I going to go for another 10, 15 days of torturing myself and not make it to the end? So you know what? Let me just pull myself out now. I don't want to get into no physical confrontation. I'm done. Right. Right. So right, right after that situation, you go to the reward challenge where you won, where we just talked about, where you and Wu went and raided their camp. And um, did you get any sense from from Sarah specifically when you were handing that clue to Jeremiah? Did you feel like you were going to have to answer for that later? See, absolutely, and that's why when I go back to my tribe, I tell them everything that I did because I knew it was going to come back. I knew it was going to come back as soon as we merged. All my lies were going to come back. I knew the captain was going to come back. I knew if there's a chance that my lies were going to come back. I needed to get myself out of, just like I right. told you guys earlier. Right. So I knew if we merged and and and, Sa and uh, Sarah's talking to them about, about me being a cop, so she can get in their good graces. I'm coming clean with my tribe first. So I told them everything. I told me, yeah, guys, listen, I'm a cop. I trust you guys now. Whatever. I told them about the Jeremiah clue. That was gonna come back once we merged. That's you can't hide that stuff. So um, so when we, what was the question, man? About did you ever get a chance to tell Sarah oh. later why you gave it to Jeremiah? Okay, no, 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 no. So what happened was while we were there doing the raid, Sarah was there looking at us with puppy eyes, me and Wu, yeah. trying to make eye contact with us, and I did not want to look at her. I'm to, I'm looking at everybody else, and I, and I could see her through my peripheral vision that she's looking at me, but I could not give her eye contact because they were all looking for that. Right. So I just totally ignored her. Which backfired. I mean, I was trying to do something good there. I didn't want to throw under the bus, and it backfired because later on when we merged, she was like, Tony, you didn't even look at me once. You didn't even give me no signal that you were still with me. You were screaming top five. I can't believe you. And I'm like, wow. You know, but we'll get into that, I guess, as we go to the top five yeah. thing. So so how did it all go down with you giving him the note? Because because we were thinking, Jeremiah, all you had to do was show the note to everybody. And you know what? That's so easy to say, man, when you're home watching it, man. But when you're there in the in the heat of the moment, you have adrenaline, adrenaline's pumping. You're not thinking rationally. You just you just you're just going off off the moment. You know, you live in the moment. So what happened when I did that to Jeremiah? I knew I knew it was gonna come back. If he didn't get ousted, I already knew. I was already, already thinking five steps ahead. How am I gonna play it off later on when it comes back to me? So when I pulled Jeremiah to the side, I said, "Listen, Jeremiah. I said LJ likes you a lot. He wants to work with you, man." We got a clue here. I'm giving the clue to you. Let's make this happen, man. And that's how I played that off. And then I thought, I was like, oh, snap. I better go get that clue back because once he shows it, that's it. I'm done. So that's I ran I back was... over there. I ran back to him while he's still reading it, and I snatched it out of his hands. I said, I need this. I got to go. So, <laughs> so how long, how long did he have like that clue? Seconds. Yeah, was, how long did he about, have that clue? It was about 10 seconds, but I took him all the way to the back where the pond was. So again, I was flying back and forth, and Jeremiah was walking towards him. And I just snatched it. I said, "No, no, I need this back." <laughs> Jeremiah's going, "You just ruined my game, you jerk!" Yeah, exactly. But you know what? You got to give him credit, man, because if I was on that tribe, I would not have believed Jeremiah that that was a fake clue. I would have voted him out right away because I'd say, "You know what? He's lying. He has LG on the other side. He's got to go." So he pulled that off. I don't know how he did it, but it worked for him. They oh. got rid of poor little Alexis. Yep. Yes, they did. So well, I don't know how he pulled it off, man, but props to him because he should have went. He should have yeah. went after that. So then you go back to camp and you admit to everybody, hey, guess what? I'm a cop. Why? Absolutely. Uh, again, and, and the reason I did that is like, listen, guys, I trust you. We made a pact. We all, we all promised each other we're going to go top five. We made a pact, and I said, you know what? I want to come clean with you guys. I'm a police officer, blah, 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 blah. I told him all the truth because when we merge and that surfaces – that's it. I don't have no credibility with these people no more. So I came clean with them as good faith that, listen, I'm, I'm trusting in you guys, and I'm telling you the truth. I'm coming clean. It's us all the way to the end, and that's why I did that. I love it. See, what I like about the way you play the game, first of all, 
you you play the game exactly like David would play the game, or David <laughs> plays the game exactly. David would play how how you played, however you want to say it. I wish. Yeah, but the but the point is, I love it because not only are you having a blast while you're doing it, but you realize it's a game. You are playing the game. You you took the board game off the shelf. You're playing Survivor. The game's over. You put it up. You're on with your life. I love it. Beautiful, love man. It. Dwayne, it was like a passion of mine out there, and that's why. And you see, when I was in the salon, I was like, you know what? I love this group that I'm with, but I'm getting bored. I want I want the shenanigans. I want to play. Yeah. You know, over there was a hangout. It was like we were on vacation at a resort, you know, chilling with LJ, with Jeffro. We were, we didn't talk strategy. We didn't have to. We were all happy together. We were fishing. We were sunbathing. We were swimming. We were eating. They even made me kill a chicken, man, and I was devastated. <laughs> I was so hurt. LJ told me how to kill a chicken, man, and I, I, wow. I hated that. I hated that so much. But we had yeah. such a good time, man. We had a blast over there. But that was not the game, though. You know, that's not the game. Right. That's vacationing. I didn't want a vacation. Yeah. I want to play. Right. So, so then we come to that immunity challenge where it ends with a puzzle, and your best spot with a puzzle is from a distance. We see there that your strength <laughs> with puzzles is from afar, where you support and cheer on your teammates. But isn't it the, isn't that? I think that was the last challenge for the tribes, and that's where the top five came out. Yes, yes, that was it. Um, and again, that top five, pure emotion. It's raw. You can't yeah. control that. So it's not like I made a move. That wasn't a bad move. It was a bad moment. It, it, it just came out because at that moment, I really, really wanted to stick strong to the five. Right. So I did swear to them. I did swear my mother and my kid to them. It was real. I really wanted to go with them. I did not want to lose another member of our tribe. I was so comfortable with them that I wanted to go all the way to the end with them. And that's why when we won, I was so excited, so happy. I was like, yes, top five, because we knew we had Sarah on the other side. We knew we had either Jeffra or Alexis on the other side. So as far as we were concerned, us five were concerned, we're good at the merge because we're pulling one of them over and we're running the game. So if if top five baby was – wow, that could have been a song. Top five baby. Yeah. If, if, if top five baby was a mistake, what was yes. an emotional mistake. Yes. I, I don't see that you made too many of those during the game. It seems like everything you did, you had thought out like – in the night, whenever you did all your thinking, yes. you had thought it all out and you had done it. Did you make any more of those emotional mistakes besides top five baby? Clapping my hands like a madman when Sarah got voted out. Yeah, I was wondering about that. That's, that was another. That was another emotional thing because at that moment I didn't care if it was Sarah, I didn't care if it was Jeremiah, I didn't care if it was top, I didn't care who it was as long as it was none of my group. Right. So when we played two idols and the vote because of Spencer. Went to Jeffra. In my mind, I'm like, we just lost two idols and we lost the game because yeah. we got no idols and we got no numbers. We're done. So that's what I'm thinking. And then when I seen Jeffra and when I seen um, Sarah's name come out and she was gone, raw emotion once again, right. Pretty uncontrollable emotions. Yeah. And again, it had nothing to do with Sarah personally. It just had to do with the fact that we didn't lose our number and Cass did flip because we knew Cass was going to flip. We didn't know, but we had an agreement that Cass was going to put Sarah's name down. Jeffra started that whole thing, by the way, and she didn't get the credit for that. Yeah. Jeffra started the fight between Cass and uh, Sarah. Oh, I come nice. back from the water. Yeah, I came back from the water well, and I see Jeffra doing the moonwalk. She was like backing out of a conversation that she started with Cass and Sarah, <laughs> and she let them. It was like a cat fight, and Jeffra just moonwalked away out of it. And I say, well, what happened, Jeffra? She's like, I don't know, but I just got them started fighting, and I love it. And I was yeah. like, wow. And then and then that spilled over to the next morning, and Trish grabbed this girl. Uh, Trish grabbed Cass. And that's when that all stuff that you've seen on, on TV happened. Right, right. So, But at that point, I kept telling Trish, hold up, hold up, Trish, because we really wanted Sarah to come on our side. We really wanted Sarah, you know. So I tried my best to convince Sarah. I was like, Trish, just hold off, please, just hold off. Let me go see what I can do with Sarah. We knew the fight between Sarah and Cass, and that's why I kept throwing to Sarah. I said, Sarah, if you want Cass gone, we could get rid of Cass. But Sarah didn't want to do that, you know. Yeah. She didn't want to come back. Hey, hey before you – when you came over on the boat, did you check all those food containers for more idols and clues? Um. Oh yeah, yeah. That was I already ransacked that thing. I ransacked <laughs> that. I, you know, as they were passing it to me to put in the boat, I'm looking through everything as I'm passing it. You know, so yeah. I ransacked that. And and then and then um, that was the clue with the special idol, which is somewhere in camp. Remember that? So right. I'm watching all those hands, man. I, that's I was. I didn't even care what I was just putting stuff in my mouth, not even knowing what I was eating. I was looking at everybody's hands. I wanted to see whose hands moved. And I see Morgan. Morgan came out of the cookie jar. She put a cookie in her hand, in her mouth, with a closed hand. So it was like closed. So I'm saying to myself, she has a clue. She has a clue in that hand because she walked off into the by the tree mill. And yeah. everybody, everybody dropped their food and ran to the back to look for the uh, look for the idol because we thought that Morgan knew something. 
yeah. and I guess I didn't make the A either, but we were all looking by that tree, Mel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's Merge Day. Tell us about that day. Okay, so Merge Day, um, we're all sitting down, we're all talking. I try to work Sarah. Um, LJ tried to work Jeremiah. I mean, we all went to work. Jeffro was looking for a Lexus and didn't find the Lexus. First thing I do, I said, Jeremiah, come here, man. I got to talk to you. Hey, listen, Jeremiah, man, I'm so sorry, man. That clue is not for you. I hope you didn't spend a lot of time looking for it because you're not going to find it. That clue was for our beach. And he was like, no, I know, dude. That was for our beach in Solana. We had the same exact clue. I said, yeah, man, I misread the thing. The, the thing told me to share it with my tribe, not with you guys. So I played that off, Jeremiah. It was good yeah. enough. He was good with it. You know what? I, I think it's coming to me now. I figured out what your strategy is. You played the boomerang strategy. Every shot you threw, you turned around and made amends for it before it came back to hit you in the head. And yeah. that's what I'm and saying. That's, if, and you're doing that with every person that you're talking to. And you have to. That's If, if anything can come back to you, you got to get rid of it. you got to come out first. So I grabbed him first before he starts saying, Tony, you, you messed me up. You gave me that clue. you you got to tell everybody right now that clue wasn't for me. I said, come here, Jeremiah. Let me talk to you. And that's how I did that. And I told him, I said, I messed up, Jeremiah. I read that wrong. I was supposed to share it with my tribe because it was an idol for us, not for you guys. So I hope you didn't go looking for this thing. He was like, no, I didn't look for it because I knew exactly it was for your tribe. I was like, oh, man, I messed up. I'm so sorry. Can we work together now? I love this. <laughs> you know? It's the same conversation you have with Trish. You yeah. know, I'm not sure that's really an idol. Yeah, exactly. I didn't mess you up by making you think it was. Yeah. So, so, so I'm the good guy, you know. I'm that's always right. the good guy. At least that's what I was trying to portray. Exactly. How many times did I see you? Did I see you lie to Trish, and then Trish confronts you on it, and then she ends up going, "Wow, Tony's such a great guy." You know what? You know what, Chris. <laughs> Trish is a genuine sweetheart, man. She don't have a bad bone in her body. And that's why, and even in the beginning, you saw me. I said, Trish, you can't be gullible. You know, in the beginning, I told her that. And I said, you know what? I'm working on something. I'll fill you in on it later. Because yeah. she was just, you know, with the chicken thing, she believed me 100% with the chicken. Yeah. She believed me with the idol 100%. So I was telling her, listen, listen Trish, you got to be careful. Don't be, you can't be gullible, but only with me you could be gullible. You yeah, know? I was going to say that. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying in my head. You can be gullible. Don't be gullible except with me, but you yes. didn't say that out loud. But I didn't tell her that. No. <laughs> no, she's, she's just a sweetheart, that girl. Oh, man. Hey, so so speaking of the floating dog houses, because that's what I called it too, how hard was it to be the one closest to probes when everybody had to swim past you and they were falling on their, off, their, off their perches? You know what? That's a great point, man, because everybody had to cause a wake, and I got the I got the – Dunky end of the stick on that one. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, on, on top of having a busted toe, because all they didn't show it, but it, I told Jeff, I said, Jeff, you, you need to look at my toe. It looked like it was going to pop. All the blood was going right to that wound, and it looked like it was a pimple, pimple ready to bust because all my weight, all my pressure was on it. That was so painful, so painful. But we all did it. That was the hardest part, actually, but, and we all did it. And you still made it in second place out of yeah, all the yeah, well, people. You know, you know, again, you know, like I got lucky that everybody fell off real quick, you know, right? Because I was up there maybe ten seconds. <laughs> so, well, that was one of those editing wonders that 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 CBS did. Yeah, because they showed they showed who's ten seconds and they showed my ten seconds in between each other, so it looked like twenty seconds. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's like uh, one time Scoopin was playing and uh, he had hurt his hand and they had put lotion on his hand to help him and then he had to hold on to that metal rod. And he said he literally lasted like three seconds. Yeah, he said, and he said ten like seconds. Well, that was but then they said, you know, five minutes. Whew, he falls off, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was it was tough. The balancing was was tough. It was it was yeah. a tough thing. All right, so tell us why Sarah was so adamant after y'all get back to camp. Here's the whole Sarah thing. All right. Why was Sarah so adamant that you did not have an idol? All because right. Because she was adamant. Absolutely. And here's the deal with that. I tried so hard to bring her back to us, and it was it was real. I wasn't I wasn't trying to lie. I really wanted her to come with us, so I couldn't convince her. So at that point, I said, "Okay, this girl has flipped on. She's there's no way she's coming back to me." So what I wanted to do, my strategy at that point was to lure all the votes at Tribal to me. So the first thing I do, I said, "Sarah, listen, please think about what you're gonna do," because she told me she was gonna make up her mind in Tribal. I said, "So Sarah, listen, this is what I'm gonna do. I trust you. I need to make a fake idol. I'm gonna do it right now." I went into details how I'm going to make the fake idol. I told them I'm going to rip, I'm going to cut the satchel from the rice. I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to um, take beads from the water bottle. You know, they had beads on the water bottle, mm -hmm. and I was going to take the beads from the torch because they had, and I said, I'm going to make an idol. It's going to look so real, and I'm going to play them out at tribal. So she said to herself, actually, she said it to me. She said, you don't have an idol? I said, no, I don't have an idol. Where am I going to get an idol from? I need to go make one right now. 
And again, I put on my paranoia act that I'm really scared and I'm really nervous. I'm like, I got to go make this right now, Sarah. I got to make it now. I got to go. I'll see you later. And I run away and I'm saying to myself, I hope this works. So I wanted to lure the votes into me. So when I go into tribal, everybody votes for me. I pull out, I pull out my uh, idol and I send, the guy, I send Sarah home. At that point, we wanted Sarah because Trish told me Cass was going to put Sarah's name down. So I said, you know what? As a safety valve, we'll do Sarah. <clears throat> And yeah, my, my my other question was: Was there anything Sarah could have said to win you over? And obviously, she could have, because you guys wanted her back. But, oh, absolutely. But that's uh, why that's why we got the whole Jeff. Can you verify that this is a real idol? Well, that one, no, that one, that one. I'll that tell one, you, that one. Let me let me rewind. Yeah, let me rewind a little bit. So after telling Sarah I was making a fake idol, she says, "What about LJ? LJ can't help you. Doesn't he have an idol?" I said, "LJ don't have an idol. Are you kidding me? If he had an idol, he would have played it with Cliff because we were trying to flush it out." We, he thought he was going home, and he didn't play it. So he definitely doesn't have an idol. I think Morgan has the idol. So that's how I played that. That's why she was so adamant that none of the guys had the idol. That's why she really wow. believed that. Yeah. Me trying to make a fake one, LJ not using it when he should have used it on the cliff vote off, made her believe that we didn't have idols. Right. So that's why going into that tribal council, I was 75% sure that the votes were coming my way. But 75% is not 100%. So I right. said, you know what? I need to pull this idol out. And Spencer didn't didn't con me into pulling out my idol from my bag of tricks by saying, show it to us. No, he didn't talk me into it. I needed to show that idol to them so they, so I know 100% A, the votes are not coming to me, and B, I can protect two people with one idol instead of just protect myself. Right. Now, so now it, I, uh -huh. is, is this the tribal where you went up to Jeff and said, please confirm this is a real idol? Yes, that's okay. the, is it, is it the merge? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah we're after the merge. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, you know what? You're 100% correct. This is what happened. Okay. So when I when I pull out the idol, I knew for I knew now I'm 100% sure that then they put in the votes to me, all right. right? As opposed to being 75% sure. So now I know I'm a, I gotta make the right decision. And a lot of talk was about let's get rid of the threat. Let's get rid of the threat. So I really thought that they're gonna try to get rid of LJ. So right. I said to myself, you know what? If I pull this idol out, they, it's gonna deflect the votes off me and it's gonna go to LJ and I'm gonna protect LJ. The validating part about it was I wanted to read on them. So by the time I went to Jeff, right, I said, hey, Jeff, can you validate this for me? And I'm not looking at Jeff. I'm holding the idol up. So while I wanted some time, I'm looking at everybody, and they had a grin on their face. And I'm saying to myself, you know what? They're not voting for me, man. They're definitely not voting for me because if they were voting for me, they'd be shocked. They'd be like, uh-oh, we just right. messed up. Tony's playing his idol. So I got to read from them. For that five seconds there, I looked at them, and they were grinning. And that's when I said, I'm giving it to LJ. And they still had a grin on their face, and I knew right then and then that that's it. It's not for him. Right. Well, okay. what, what was funny about that was that you you just created a situation that has never happened before, because you know n normally Probst doesn't say, "Sure, come on up and ask me a question if this is real or not." He just says, "Play it, and I'll tell you if it's real or not." Oh you know? yeah, well yeah, you give it yeah you give yeah. it to him. and you weren't playing it. You just asked him to confirm it yes. without playing it, yes. which I couldn't believe. Probes. I mean, if I'd been probes, I would have been like, uh, if you want to play it, I'll let you know if it's real or not. But he didn't do that. It, that's that's uh, if it, if it's scripted, yes, he has to go by a script, and the script right. will say he has to say that. But it's not. He lets us do whatever we do. I know, whatever which was pretty it's cool. It's our game, which is awesome. And the thing is, too, did you see, I don't know if you could go back and watch the program again at that merge. When I pulled out that idol, did you see the faces, how they were looking at Sarah, like they wanted to kill her? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that right there, that also made me think that I made uh, that I uh, made sure Cass was going to vote for Sarah. Because you seen Cass's face, she was on fire. So even if she had no thoughts of voting Sarah out, that right there made her say, you know what, we got to get rid of Sarah because she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's right. got to go. So well, that there, was was a lot of, there was a lot of. Go ahead. There was a lot of what? No, there was just a lot of, you know, there was a lot of thoughts going through my mind at that tribal, you know, and it was right. all, it was all for a purpose. Me pulling it out, me lying about having a fake one. It was all for a purpose. Right. This was the tribal that kind of blew the lid off the series for me because there was like five different things going on, yeah. all at one time, and everything bounced off the thing that happened right before it until it just culminated, and it's like we were going in this one direction, and all of a sudden idols were being played, people were being saved, and all of a sudden cast just goes. And then I'll just turn it that way. Yeah. And the and whole game changes completely for everybody. One right. tribal council and the whole – I mean, this is – to me, this is what put this season way up to the top of the rankings of seasons. 
This was one of the best tribal councils ever, and I believe Probst has even said that. I don't think he said it is the best, but he has said it's one of the best. And you know, this is where this is where Cass gets into the game more, you know, and where we start to see how how Cass plays. And I know you and I have disagreed about how Cass plays, but but I really like the way Cass does this. She's just like, huh, boom, causes a little problem. Sarah goes home. Nobody likes her anymore, you know. Spencer makes his comments and. It's just it, it's really cool to watch both you and Cass play and how your games actually like in this situation your games complemented each other even though you were playing different games. Yeah, but but Dwayne, you know, when you make when you make a move like that it's supposed to benefit you to win the game, to make you that much closer to winning the game. Making a move like Cass did didn't benefit her to try to win the game at all, especially when she goes around bragging, I was going to put Cyrus down name down no matter what you guys voted for. Because yeah. she had too much, she thought she was the queen, and I wanted to show her that you ain't nobody. I'm putting her name down. When you're telling us that, it's like, you know what? You just, you make no sense. She told us that she was going to put Sarah's name down no matter what. Yeah. Come on. How's that How's that strategic? You know, there was no strategic, there was nothing strategic about that. And then she brags she's a free agent. Come on. You, you're, at that point, you're, you're going to the end because everybody wants to take you to the end. Not because you're playing your butt off to get there. There's a big well, difference. Well, there's not. Okay, well, now some people say it doesn't matter how you get to the end as long as you get to the end. But, okay, but you're, but, not gonna, you're not going to win. Well, you're playing to right, win. Right, because same thing happened with with uh, with the Russell Hans. He made it to the end, but there was no chance he could win. Right? He wasn't playing, he wasn't playing to win, Dwayne, was that, he? No, he, well, he thought he was, but he wasn't because he misunderstood the game. Same Russell thing did with not Cass. understand the game. Same well, thing I would agree that, 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 I mean, obviously, she did not win. So, and she, but that's what my point. She thought she could win, but she was delusional about it. She, there was no way she could win when she's going around bragging like she's doing that. I'm a free agent. I was gonna put her name down anyway. Nobody respected her game. You give us a valid reason to why you did that, and we'll respect it. Telling us that you just wanted to put her name down because she thought she was a princess is not a valid, a valid strategic move. I, th and I think at that point, huh? Yeah. I think the case that we've heard so far is that is the story we've gotten is that Tony has been working in a sense in a group, but for himself. And Cass's move was just for herself. It benefited no group. It actually gave power to a different group that she wasn't even with. And it was just and it just the way it played out, the way it seemed from the edit, it was just a move that she wanted to make on her own. Yes, she was helping a different group of people and she was losing a whole group of people, but at the same time it wasn't a choreographed group, a move that would put her at the top of a group. Whereas this other group was still together. What I loved about it was you going from this of playing the idols to this of wasting the idols to this of Sarah leaving. And that's why you applauded. That's where the emotions came in after being starving and hating the bugs and hating the beach. But all of a sudden, what you didn't think was going to happen happened, or what you were hoping would happen happened, and that's where survivor emotion comes out. And that's right. why I don't care if you clap or not. I'd have been clapping. I'd have been standing up saying, oh, my gosh, did you see that? That's I exactly hope you people at home saw that because that was the best thing that's happened so far today. <laughs> and, that, and that was raw emotion. You know, that yeah. was not, it, was, it wasn't a move. It was just emotions that came out. But back, back, back to the casting, you saw even when Trish was trying to talk to Tasha that day when they were talking in the water, Cass said it herself. Nobody convinced me to vote for Sarah. I did that on my own. Nobody made me flip. So she, again, uh, instead of her trying to argue her case that it was strategic, she's making a point that she didn't care about nothing. She wanted to do that, and she did it. For no benefit of our own. If okay. You guys understand that. All right. Well, one thing that I I don't want to talk about Cass a whole lot, but one of the things that I noticed about Cass that I think was a mistake, and I'll tell her this whenever we talk to her in just a couple of weeks, is that she would cause chaos, but everybody knew she was causing chaos. If you're gonna cause chaos, do it, but make it look like someone else is causing chaos. Don't fess up to it. Yeah. You know? But don't but go she, around came saying I'm the one who's causing the chaos. Because that that's not the way you're supposed to do it. That was her MO though. You know, that was right. her motive. That's what she wanted to do. Right. All right, so let's see, where are we? We got day twenty. Let's see. Well, you we come out of coming out of the best best tribal council of the season so far. And the next morning you got Cass and Morgan. Which oh, yes. probably right into what you were hoping would happen that somebody else would get into an argument and it wasn't you. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So that vote off there, I mean they showed they showed uh they showed uh, me saying that Morgan is undeserving. She needs to go. She needs to get out of here and that. But they didn't show the part that I was talking. See, Trish was upset because she wanted Tosh out. 
after we voted off Morgan, me and Trish got into a big fight at Tree Mill. And, and Trish was like, I told you we needed to get rid of Tasha. Now Tasha's going to go on an immunity run. And I told her, and I said, listen, Trish, this is the truth. This is what happened. If we got rid of Tasha, LJ still has his fourth beauty, which would have been Morgan. It would have been LJ. It would have been Jeremiah. It would have been Jeffra. I know people saying, just like with the Girls Alliance, there was no Girl Alliance. I don't care if it was happening that moment. The possibility of it happening is there. And a right. survivor from one day to the next, anything can happen. So that's why I wanted to get rid of a beauty because I didn't want them to have their four, number four against R3. Right. I had three bronze. So that was the main reason for Morgan on top of many others, on top of not having the idol, on top of Cass fighting with her. Because at that point, if Cass flipped, you know, if we were going in there saying we're going to get rid of Tasha, and then Cass said to herself, you know what, you know what, I think I want, I want to save Tasha. I'm going to get rid of you, Tony. I would have been going home. But being right. that Cass had a fight with Morgan, I was like, this is perfect. And it worked out perfect because that was a day I seen four votes of my name. Yeah, you know yeah. That yeah. was the tribal. So that was the, the that was the one that really hit home because I said, you know what? These people just advertised for the second time that they want to get rid of Tony. So anybody on my team wants to get rid of Tony, all they got to do is go to them and say, hey, guys, we know how bad you want to get rid of Tony. Give us one or two of your votes. Let's get rid of Tony. Yeah. So once I seen that, that to me was advertisement that these people want Tony out. And that's when I said, you know what? It's my turn now to use them before somebody else uses them. And that's when I made that deal with Jeremiah and uh, Spencer to get rid of LJ. All right, so at this point, do you recall what was your final three at this point? Who was who was in your final three? I, you know what? I don't even think I had a final three at that point. At okay. that point, I was I was too busy worrying about my threats as opposed right. to who I want to go to the end with. So at this point, Sarah's gone. Morgan's getting ready to go. You're meeting Cass really for the first time because you haven't been with her at all the whole yes. season. Till yes. then, is she starting to look attractive to take to the end? Um, at that point. Uh, not not, not really, not, not really. At that point, she was still a threat to me because I couldn't read her. Like I didn't know, I didn't know what she was thinking, what she was about. Until later on, I started saying, you know what? Cass is the most predictable player in this game. You stroke her ego, you cater to her emotions, and you can make her do whatever you want to do. And that's what that's how I was going along later on in the game. That's how come yeah. I knew exactly what she was up to. Right. Because if you if you if you cater to her, you're in good shape. If you fight with her, you're in bad shape, according to her. But she didn't have she didn't have the power. She didn't have the respect from the other players to make moves. You right, know. Right. All right. So, so then after all that, then we get the Spencer and the Wu and the Idol and the Clue, and mayhem <laughs> ensues as we go down that river that you eventually had to go in yourself because you had another clue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole mad Idol hunt. And, and, yeah, the mad treasure hunt. That was it. Mad wow. treasure hunt, right? Yep. Yeah. That yeah, was that the episode. Was um, yeah, that one, that one, uh, just like you've seen it, they came back from a, uh, they came back from a reward, and the same thing. When people go away on a reward, you got to think something's going on. So they came back. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Oh no, nothing. We didn't talk. We got the letters from home, and it was so overwhelming. We didn't get to talk strategy. Red flags are popping up all over the place. So I'm yeah. already, I'm already skeptical now. Listen, Jeff, there must have been something going on. Jeff was about to flip on us because of the LJ. So that's what I'm thinking already. All right. So now the, 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 the clue, they're running around looking for this idol. We're all there. Everybody's there. All of us are there. I'm there until it gets dark. Spencer was there until it gets dark. Meanwhile, he had it. Yeah. See, Spencer found it, and he still was there looking. So at that point, that's when I started tricking uh, when I started tricking LJ into trying to break his promise because at that point, I was like, you know what? I got to turn on LJ because he's the biggest threat in my alliance at this moment. And now these people, Spencer and them, are putting my name down, advertising, so I need to make a move. So that's when I came up to LJ and I said, LJ, I'm really concerned, man. I think who has that idol? And I had to keep doing it and doing it and doing it until LJ said, all right, Tone, if it makes you feel better, we can blindside him. And I was like, yes. You know, so at that point, <laughs> see, my whole thing in the game was jury management. I know a lot of people don't think that, but there was no other reason for me to lie to LJ other than to have jury management, to let everybody right. know, listen, I didn't backstab this guy. And that's why every time I kept saying about loyalty and honor and integrity – at tribal because that's the that's what I was tr really trying to act like I was doing. I was protecting my alliance. LJ right. was going to flip on Wu, so I had to protect Wu and protect our alliance. Right. Jeffra came back. Jeffra wanted to flip on us. She admitted to us, so I had to protect my alliance because the numbers weren't right for her right then and then to flip on us. That's why she didn't. But when the numbers become right for her, she will flip on us. So I had to get rid of Jeffra at that moment. So it wasn't me just backstabbing people and blindsiding people. It was me protecting the alliance, and that's what I wanted to portray out there that I was doing the right thing. See, that's one thing I love about Survivor is that I think it, one one important thing is you have to be prepared to lie 
and you have to have two stories. You have to have two answers almost for every question, but you really got to be prepared for the next situation you're about to walk into. And they really should have prepared Jeff for better, coming back from that chat, that reward on what she was supposed to answer. Because Spencer and Tasha should have known, especially Spencer, that she's going to get asked flat out by Tony the interrogator, what did you talk about and what kind of strategy? And all she had to do was come back and say, Tony, they wanted me to flip so bad, but I am not flipping. I'm not going anywhere. And she could have still flipped. She could have tried it. She might. She wouldn't have had the move necessarily, but she needed a better lie. You can't come back and say, we did not talk strategy. You're sitting with super fans yep. at a reward, and you're going to tell me you, it's, you've got to have a better lie. Even if you don't like lying, you've got to have a better lie in Survivor. Well, well, here's the thing, uh, Dave. Pre-game, not only this season, but every season. Every season you see people pre-game, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to the end. I'm going to lie. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to steal. I'm not here to make friends. Everybody says that. But when you go in there, and everybody says that when you're, you're, you're talking about opponents. You're talking about people you never met before. Right. Every, it's easy to say that. But once you start meeting people, man, it's so much harder, man, to lie to people. It's so hard to look at somebody in the face and lie to them. It is so hard, especially when you're bonding with each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like me and Jeff were good. When we went to the Solana, we were good, man. You know, we got rid of Cliff. We got Lindsay left. And we were tight and we were close. So it, it and later on, it's hard to lie to that person. It's so hard. You know, it's not as easy as just saying, you know, this is what I came here to do. I came here to lie. I came here. No, it's not like that. Yeah. You know, it's hard. And it's tough, and that's the hardest part of the game. And as a matter of fact, at the end, when I was leaving, Jeff says, "Would you ever play?" And I said, "Hell no! I hate this game. It's so evil. It's nasty." And it, and it was. I was. Yeah. I was. I, I was broken, man. I was broken, especially after that tribal where Trish ripped into me like that. That right. was real hurt, man. That was real pain. And you know, right. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not a. I'm not garbage, man. I'm a person just like everybody else is. Everybody was out there to try to make money to better their family. You know what I mean? We're all humans. It right. hurts, man. It hurts. It really hurts. Right. And that's the, sh the the worst part of the survivor is that, you know that it, I'm gonna jump ahead just a little bit and then we'll get back to where we are in the in the days. But it seemed like after the reunion show, you kind of just kind of were not seen. You weren't on social media. You, I don't think you went to any of the after parties or anything like that. Did, were, were you did that did that reunion show just kind of get to you? What, what do you do, Dwayne? What do you do, Dwayne, when, when you just awarded a million dollars, the same thing everybody else wanted to get? What do you do? You, 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 I couldn't even smile. I couldn't celebrate. I couldn't jump up and jump. You know, inside I was jumping up and down. Oh, my God, I just won a million dollars. I just bettered my family. But at yeah. the same time, these people did it. And these are my friends. You know what I mean? Right. So so it's like, you know what? Let me let me just relax. I, I can celebrate later at home in the privacy behind closed doors. You right. know, and, and that, that's what sucks about the game. As much as a, a, an accomplishment that was, not not only the million dollars, but to win Survivor, to go out there with 17 other people that want the same thing you do, and you and you did it, you did it, and you can't right. celebrate. You can't celebrate. Right. You can't. I can't. Right. If it was 50 bucks, 100 bucks, I would have been doing right. backflips into the audience. Right. So so it was it was an emotional uh, tug of war within your spirit. And and, and, it, and it started at, at the final tribal when I I kind of convinced who to take me. When I knew that might have been the wrong move for who to do. Yeah. So when I go to the final tribal, I wish it was with somebody with cast because my arguments would have been deep. They would have been strong. They would have been aggressive. But being I was with somebody like Wu, I didn't want to fight against him. I could have right. sat, I could have stood up and say, "Listen, this is Wu. This is what he did in the game." I, I wouldn't even have to talk about my game. I would have just said what Wu did in the game, and I right. would have won. But I couldn't do it. I couldn't fight against Wu, you know. And that's why I was giving Wu props. At my tribal council that I had to speak for my game, I was telling Wu, I want to thank Wu for taking me here. I appreciate the opportunity. And, you know, I, 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 you couldn't do it, man. I just couldn't do it. Right. It's, right. it's just tough. Yeah. All right, so we'll get back to the days because I know you, you want us to go through the days. We'll so, go through the days. Yeah. Hey, so so where, where did the bag of tricks come from and when did that come up? Oh, that, that's uh, – what, what was going in my mind, I had nothing. I had no protection. So what was going on through my mind? I was like, you know what? I got to I got to raise some kind of reasonable doubt with these people because it's like when you're out there and and your brain your your brain is exhausted. You don't want to do a lot of thinking. So I'm saying to myself, you know what? I got to I got to raise a reasonable doubt within these people to try to figure out whether Tony's lying or he's telling the truth. Is he telling the truth and lying? Is he lying and telling the truth? So instead of going through all that and trying to process that, it's so much easier to just leave Tony alone for now and go to the next easiest target. And that's what I was doing out there. I was just trying to cause a doubt in their mind. So it's so much easier to walk away from me and go to the next easy target as opposed to try to figure out if I'm lying, to take a chance to see if I'm lying. 
Nobody wants to do that. You don't want to go home. You don't want to say, you know what? Let me let me call his bluff. And and the and the consequences for that is I might go home. So right. you know what? I'll leave him to the side. And that's what was going on out there. So again, whether I had idols or not, that bag of tricks was there. I didn't care what was in that bag. I was gonna lie to them and tell them I got something powerful in this bag. Right. And it actually ended up working out for you because people started thinking of it as, you know, the little kid who cried wolf. I, yep. You know, the then they didn't believe that you had anything in it. Absolutely. And the same thing when I got into that fight with our cast, that argument with cast, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity for me to introduce that I have that special idol because they're not going to believe me. And that's right. what I want. I wanted right. to make them believers. So I wanted them to say that, you know what, that's such an obvious lie. And later on when I proved them to be wrong, that's it. They can't doubt me. And that was right. perfect for me to say it was final four. So guess what, guys? You always thought I was lying, but I proved you wrong already. And I'm going to prove you wrong again because I'm going to use this idol at final four. Right. Okay, so this tribal, whenever you brought out the bag of tricks, is the tribal whenever you got rid of LJ, if I remember correctly. Yes. So, so when you're at the well with Trish, you've gotten Wu with you. Trish isn't going with you. Did 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 you get that that a read from her, and were you a little nervous whenever you knew she wasn't going to go with you? Well, here he was the deal. You know, like me, I wanted to go. I I was like water. I was going to find the, the the path of least resistance. Right. So I went to Trish, my 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 alliance member, and I said I pitched the idea to her. I said, listen, we have to do something. When I seen she was like a little bit skeptical about it, that's when I said, you know what, Trish, I don't know what what we should do, but I just want you to know that we need to keep our guards up with this guy. At that point, I knew like I I I. I shut off the fire that she had in her head so she wouldn't go back to LJ and say anything. I was like, you know what? Let's just not sleep on this guy. That's all. And that's when I went behind her back and did what I had to do. Yeah. You know, at that point, I didn't want to get into a confrontation with her. I didn't want her to go to LJ and say, LJ, listen, this is what's going on. But I'm sitting there. I'm watching LJ talk to Trish. I'm watching LJ talk to Jeffra. I'm watching LJ talk to Cass. And I'm saying to myself, you know what? LJ's up to no good. So I can't tell these people, you know, I couldn't tell Jeffra because I thought Jeffra and LJ were real close. I couldn't tell Cass because you see how Cass played. So at that right. point, the only person I could trust a little bit enough to tell her something was Trish. But when I seen Trish wasn't on my side, er, I put the brakes on. And I said, you know what, Trish, maybe we'll just wait another tribal. And that's when I threw my, you know, I sneak attacked them. Right. See, I, so, I, I think the LJ vote was probably the biggest move that you had to date in the game. Because the LJ vote, to me, had a ripple effect on Jeffra. Which it took an extra episode, but it put her on notice to the point where you kind of forced her hand in the sense that she realized she didn't want to trust you later on and she was going to want to flip, which gave you the perfect reason to vote her out and take people with you to do that. And that's, so I, I really think the LJ vote was probably your biggest move to this point. Yeah, that's I, I, at first that's what I – like when people asked me what was the big move and I said LJ was because that was when I began to like kill my own alliance from within. But then right. when I think about it now that I'm done, I think me convincing Wu to take me to the end was the biggest move of the game, obviously. <laughs> you know, but all, right, all right, I said today, today. We're not there yet. All, but right, I to that, all right, to that moment. So, I don't know, absolutely. The, the LJ was huge. That was a huge move. And, again, luck has a lot to do with that because you don't know. When you make a move like that, you don't know what the reactions are going to be. You can assume what they are, but luck has a lot to do with it, how everything plays out. Right. So at that tribal, Cass made a comment <clears throat> that I think you also – agree with and it's one of the comments that I really liked she said I checked my life at the door are you a player or a person and and you know and, and that's what we were talking about earlier whenever you're playing survivor can you check your life at the door can you I'm I'm a cop but not when I'm in the game you know and that that that's what I've heard in fact Cass even said that in one of those interviews I think she put it on a Twitter today where she's like look he wasn't a cop in the game he was Tony playing the game, you know, and so that that's I really loved that quote, and it applied both to you and to Cass. It applies to everybody that plays Survivor. The people that can't check check their honor, their integrity. Who's the living proof of that, right? Right. When you the honorable person will not win a game of Survivor. If that game was if that game was about honor, integrity, and loyalty, you better believe that I would be the most honest person out there. But it's right. not the game. The game is to lie. And we all know that going into it. But, again, it goes it goes back to, like, how strong are you of a person? Like, again, with me, sometimes my emotions got the best of me. With the swearing on my family, that was right. real, man. It was real. At that moment, it was real. But then again, and then you change every minute. You know, it's, it's no different from when you get married. You know, you, you, you take an oath till death do us part. Because that's what's real at that moment. Two years later, 20 years later, those feelings might change. So it's not like you lied on that day. You didn't lie that day. It was real at that moment. And that's what I was trying to th – well, these people know who I am. So they knew when I was swearing on my family because they meant a lot to me. They knew how much my family meant to me. I was real. And that's why it was 100,000% believable when I told them I'm with you. I swear on my family. I swear on my dad. It, it was real. 
And that's right. what happens out there. That was emotions talking. Later on, my brain caught up and say, listen, man, the heart is blind. You need to, to, to realize what you're doing here. If I kept my word and I, and I stayed on that sinking ship, I would have drowned. So I said to myself, I can't stay on the ship. I need to jump ship, and I need to break my promise. And that's right. what I was doing, which it looked grimy on TV, but it was real. It was, it was genuine at that right. moment. And then when you get back to camp, Trish is blindsided, and yet she still comes back to you and says, oh, I understand. Which one was that, the LJ? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, she didn't understand. She understood the Jeffra one. She didn't understand the LJ too much. She was still a little ticked off with the LJ. No, yeah, yeah, I know. She was initially ticked off, and then you talked to her about it, and then she's back in your fold again. Because I protected my alliance. Right. I said, Trish, listen, you were blind to it, Trish. You didn't see what was going on. And she, she said, you know what, Tony, you were right, because LJ did make a final three with me. And I was like, exactly. Where was I in that final three? It was you, it was you, LJ, and Jeffra, and then it was you, LJ, and Cass. So where was I in that? So I said, believe me, believe me, Trish. He wanted a blindside woo, and he was going to start getting us out one by one. That's what yeah. I was telling her. And that's what everybody in my alliance believed. And that was because it was jury management. I didn't want LJ to think that I, I was a weasel and I backstabbed him and I snaked him. I made him believe that, hey, LJ, listen, I was scared. When you told me you were going to break your promise to get rid of Wu, I was scared because you could have broke your promise just as easily to me. So right. I had to get you first. And that right. was, again, part of the jury management. Sure, and that's what you told him in the final tribal. That's, and he respected that. I was scared to death of you, LJ. Of course I got rid of you. And he respected that until he got home and seen that I made up that lie about Wu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But uh, there's a but yes, lot of stuff that I think people saw whenever they got home. Oh yeah, that well they didn't like. But I mean, you know, you you saw stuff whenever you got home, and you didn't know all this stuff about Jatia and all that kind of stuff until you no, watched no, it. No, 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 exactly. And yeah. and, and, uh, and the one with Jeffra, the one that Jeffra caught me off guard when she was like, "I can't stand them. I'm over him." Do you yeah. remember that yeah. part yeah. when Trish had to? And, and just to just to touch up with that, the reason that Jeffra was so mad at me, it was it wasn't the whole time. It was just that day because uh. There was a conversation where I said, hey, listen, uh, because Jeffrey says, listen, Tony, I don't want to be anybody's goat. You know, if you wanted to make a move, you could have came to me because I wanted to get rid of LJ since day one. And I don't know if you guys remember, Jeffrey was pitching that idea to get rid of LJ instead of, uh, was it Bryce that day when, yeah. when Alexis, yeah, when Morgan was yeah. talking, she was like, why don't we just get rid of LJ? So I didn't know that. I really thought that, that Jeffrey and LJ were an item. So that's when I, she said, listen, Tony, I don't want, I'm not nobody's goat. I don't want to be nobody's goat, blah, 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 blah. And that's when I came to her and I said something rude. And I said, well, I said, Jeffrey, you should thank me because now you're a free goat. I just cut you loose from LJ. And she was like, what are you talking about? And she got really pissed off at me for yeah. saying, making that comment. And that's yeah. why you seen her. She's like, I, I just don't, I'm over him, blah, blah, You know, she went, and I didn't, and I didn't, I didn't expect that because I thought me and Jeffrey were real good. But then it dawned upon me that, yes, I remember I told her that, you know, she got upset. All right. So in a couple of days, we have the reward challenge. This is after the whole Spy Shack thing, where they hype this whole episode, the Spy Shack, the Spy Shack, and they show up for like three seconds. You know. Oh, so. yeah. But, but my uh, song got new life again, so I was happy about that. And, and, and you know what I'm surprised about? I'm surprised that they didn't show. Jeffro actually caught me in the Spy Shack. Oh, she, awesome. Jeffro caught me sneaking out of the Spy Shack, and that's when she went and told the girls, because I, when Jeffro caught me, I was spying on Cass and Trish. I heard I was at the well, and I heard Cass asking Trish, "So, what do you think about Tony?" And Trish was telling Cass, "Well, you know, I, I I like Tony. He's a nice guy, you know, you know." And then Cass was saying, "But you don't think he's a threat?" And I started hearing them, and she's like, "You know what? He might be a threat, but he's with us right now." And then Cass agreed with Trish at that moment, you know. And that's when I heard that. So that's why, and that's when I went and I found the special idol. That yes. was that time, around that time. Yeah. And then when I went into the water and I seen all the girls talking, I had poison ivy on my chest. And that's why I was screaming when I found the idol. I was screaming up and down. I was jumping up and down. I got to go wash up. I got to go wash up because I was on fire. My chest was burning. <laughs> so when I ran out, I went into the water and I seen the girls talking. And that's when Jeffrey told the girls that, hey, listen, Tony's been spying on you. And I admitted it. I said, hey, listen, girls, I'm telling you the truth. No more shenanigans. No more double agent stuff. I'm not going to spy on you guys no more. And that was that's how that came about because Jeffrey caught me spying yeah. on Cass and Trish. Little peeping Tony. Yeah, I was I was listening to everybody. You know, like you arrest people for doing that kind of stuff, Tony. I, I, yeah, but this was legit. <laughs> this was real stuff going on. <laughs> okay, so on that reward challenge, Spencer, Jeff, Tasha, and Jeremiah go on reward, and you say bad things are going to happen on this reward, right? Yes. And and but it it didn't really, but you were worried about it. Yes, absolutely. I, again, I don't care if it's real or if it's not real. 
if there's a potential for it to be real, I, I'm worried, and I need to do something about it. And how, right. how were these teams picked? Because this was the one situation you didn't want, the one person that was not happy with you going with the three people that weren't with you. Yeah. You know what? It's, as ironic as it is, everybody that watches the show says, wow, how did they split the teams just like that? How did Sarah become? It's all random, man. He yeah. comes around with a bag, and you put your hand in there, you hold the rock, and you open the rock, and whoever's colors matches, you're on one team. It's just crazy how that works. There's no there's not, no trickery. There's nothing. It's right there in front of us. He has a bag, shakes the bag up, put your hand in one by one, and you grab the rock you want, and that's it. Okay, but see – if he's really talented, like maybe a David Blaine thing, then <laughs> you don't know which bag he's showing you. You know, he's really got two bags. I'm just kidding. One one bag, we all put our hands in there, grab a rock, show your colors, and it's just just like it's just nuts how it just split up like that. And that happened to me twice, as a matter of fact. It happened again later on with a uh, Cass and Wu that left me. Yeah, it it, so, it was like later on at the at at the auction. I was joking about how. Probes leans over and goes, get, get the rock in the secret pocket. Yeah, well, get yeah, that's the because the, the theories with the special idol, so they figured that they helped me out with the rock, too. <laughs> yeah. Thank God, thank God Spencer got to pick first. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, so who got, um, who got Jeffra? Did Jeffra convince herself not to flip, or did somebody get her not to flip? Well, I, I believe after the fact, Jeffra was telling us it didn't make sense. Had Spencer showed us the idol, then I would have had the numbers, and I would have definitely flipped. But being I didn't have the numbers, I'm not going to go into tribal council and draw rocks because remember they want to get me out, right? right? So if they split, if they if they if it's a tie, I'm the safest person there. If yeah. I'm the one they want to get out, I'm safe because I don't go home. They got to draw rocks, so it right. would make no sense for her, and it didn't make sense for her to do that. And that's what I was trying to tell my alliance. It didn't make sense for Jeffrey to flip. That's why she didn't. What's going to happen when it does make sense for her to flip? Guess what? Her only move is to flip. You know, yeah. and that was my whole thing about it. So I protected my alliance once again. Right. And David Jeremiah goes on that night, yeah. Yeah, so then Tash Tasha wins immunity again, and she's going after you, as she should, mm -hmm. right? And you go and find the special idol. Was this on that day? Was this on day 28? I, I, I don't remember the days. I don't remember because what happened was the auction idol and the special idol were like back-to-back, -back, man. It was amazing. I had two idols within 20 hours. Yeah, the so super the idol, idol was at the end of episode nine, and the the auction idol was right at the beginning of episode ten. So they're yeah. within within hours almost of each other. You find yeah. the special idol, and then you come back to the water, and that's whenever you get all over Trish for asking you if they can trust you. Yes, that that, that I had the idol at that point. Okay, and and you found it right before Trish was trying to help you with Jeff. With Jeff Ray, you got mad at her. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it definitely wasn't. It definitely wasn't right before tribal council. Right, right. Yeah. No, I didn't find the idol before tribal council. That was just, for, I guess, for drama. Right. But I had, so, I had the idol. Okay, so lots of people are saying that production led you to the idol, or that you know, I mean, of course, we all know that cameramen are are human beings, and if you're close to an idol, they're definitely going to be filming you, and if you're not close to an idol, they may be eating a Snickers bar or something. But that's not what people are saying. There are some people, some players even who say that you were given direction and that you were helped. What do you have to say to that? I have to say that as baloney, I'm one person that they do not want the idol to be in his hands. They would rather see Spencer have it. They'd rather see somebody like Tasha have it. They didn't – why would they – I didn't need it. I was, in a, I was the aggressor. I was in a power position. I had the alliance. I had the numbers. I did not need the idol. It just happened to be, with, like I said, a lot of luck and a lot of hard work. I combed the whole beach. I, I checked the I checked the bridges. I checked every tree. I checked every every uh every where the water well was. Every iconic every iconic thing on the island. The tree mill. I dug around it. And again, back to the day one where I saw Lindsay and um Lindsay and Sarah digging. That's what made me dig. If I didn't see that, I would have never found the idol. I don't think the idol was even made for anybody to find it. To be honest with you, they probably put it there and they say, you know what, the game is playing good. Nobody really needs that because nobody really needed that special idol except for Spencer and Tasha. We oh, yeah. needed. We were cruising. We were. I was. I was on course, rolling with force. Nobody was messing with me. I did not need that idol. And you seen, I didn't need it. And in the end, I came up with this bogus lie, which again I didn't need because as long as Spencer and Tasha were in the game, I was safe. Okay, so if you go back and you and you think about the questions that the that the producers asked you while you were doing your your confessionals, that that's when some people say that a lot of the 
production interference happens because of the way they phrase their questions and the way they respond to your answers and things like that. If you go back and you think about those things, I, I, I realize it's been like a year or even or right about a year. Can you think of that or do you think to, to yourself, no, production did not give me any clues, did not give me any hint? See, see, this is the thing. Production would ask me, so what do you think about Dwayne? I think Dwayne is it, blah, 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 blah. I think David and this, and then Cliff and that, and then Lindsay and that, and then this. and they're like, all right, you just answered 12 of our questions. We're good. Do you have anything else to say? That's how it always was with me and them. So okay. the questions they asked me, I would like veer off so, so I was just nuts out there. Like I was at a thousand miles an hour and I was answering them questions before they even asked me. So right. it's like, I didn't even listen to what they were saying to me, to be honest with you. But there would be times where they would ask me, um, they would ask me the same question in two different ways. So I guess right. they can go with a different story if they needed to. Like right. that, I recall them doing that. But as far as like leading questions, not really. How long so were your go. sessions? How long were your sessions with the cameraman? I guess the same as everybody. You know, they they want to keep everything equal because they don't want to see somebody gone for four hours. You know, so they would yeah. just try to make it all equal with everybody. So they would take Wu, they would take Trish, they would take Cass, they would take me, and they try to keep it all equal. So nobody says, wait, 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 this guy must be telling them something good because he's gone for yeah. a long time. So it was never like that. Sometimes I would finish because like, again. Blah, 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 just, just like crazy. Just they asked me one question, and I was just going off the charts with answering the questions. And they said they they checked this off. They they had a little book where they just right. checked off. Like, All right, you answered that one. All right, you took care of this one. You took care of this. anything else you want to say? And they were like, yeah. As a matter of fact, they're like, no, just kidding. Get out of here. You know, they would just right. send me out of there. So I'm like, hold on, guys. I was only here two minutes. Yeah. So they would they would just sit there and just moment of silence. You know. Right. Well, then that's a change because I know in a Sherry season for sure, Sherry Beethman whenever Cochran was playing and stuff, that she would say she'd be done in like 10 or 15 minutes, and she thought it was awesome, but Cochran would be gone for two hours. Oh, wow. So, that, so, so this must be something that they've changed because of that, possibly. Yeah, po but. possibly, but yeah, no, as, as far as I remember, and, and you know, I'm pretty observant, so I used to watch all that stuff too, Right. and everybody was equal. Everybody's timing was equal. Um, but as far as, you know, and a lot of people will say leading questions, it, ju it just depends who you are. If you need to be led, maybe they will lead you, right. you know, with a question by saying, so uh, so, so Dwayne's a bad guy, right? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. If, if they needed to, they would do it. Yeah. But someone like me, probably they didn't need to do nothing like that because I was just giving them everything. Right. Or maybe, you know, that's a very interesting tree over there. Have you looked at it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I didn't need that either, man. I didn't need that. <laughs> I, I, I combed the whole place. It was It was... You know, the, the thing is, again, with luck, like I say with luck, but hard work has to come with that also, you know. Right. You, if, if, you, if you're walking and you trip over something like an idol, that's 100% luck. But if right. you're going out there and you're looking and you're digging and you're digging, chances are you will find it. It's there. You just got to look right. for it. And the harder right. you look for it and the more you look for it, you're going to find it. Right. Well, I will say Spencer told, Par Spencer told Poverty that you searched for idols five times, a hundred times more than anybody else did. You were constantly out there looking. And he even said to her, you know, I was afraid to go out there because I didn't want people to think I was looking for the idol. But thinking about it, I probably should have because it worked for Tony. I, di I didn't care, Dwayne. They, they want to know that I'm looking for the idol. Good, because you know what? I got an idol. Mess with right. me and see what happens to you. And you I showed them my bag of tricks. And, and I'm yeah. filling up my bag of tricks. So I used to go out there and they knew I was looking, but I didn't care. Right. right. Okay, so so back at the water, Trish, Trish is trying to – trying to help Jeffra, trying to get Jeffra in the fold, and she confronts you. Can we trust you? It looks like you get really mad at her. And is is, is, is that what happened? What happened there in the water? You know, I, I can't remember. I, I remember what you're talking about, but I don't remember if the emotions were real when I said, Trish, don't insult me like that. Don't insult me. I don't know if that was real or if that was me acting in front of them to say, like, you know, you just insulted me because you know you can right. trust me. I haven't done anything wrong. So I don't even remember what the emotion was, but the point that I was trying to get across was, hey, listen, how dare you ask me that when all I did was protect us all the time? You know, so that's what I was trying to portray to them at all times. And that's, again, that's that's the incident I was telling you about Jeffrey right. catching me spying on Trish and Cass. Right. But how ironic is it for you to say, how dare you tell me you can't trust me? Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> again, again, situational. You I know, know, it's just hilarious. It's funny. It's, it's, you know, when you go out there, you, you know, yes, they're numbers, right? But you have to assign a value to each one of those numbers. Sure. How much is this person, how, how valuable is this person to you today? How valuable is this person to you today? So obviously they're numbers, but I didn't care about having an alliance of numbers. I cared about having a, a voting block. I cared about who was the most valuable person to me that day. 
that day at tribal council, who is more valuable to me? And that's right. what I did the whole entire game. So that at one point, Trish was no longer valuable to me. It was time for her to go. Right. Who became more valuable than Trish at one point? But a week before that, Trish was more valuable than Wu. And you heard right. me in a confessional say, you know what? This is the point where I like Wu. When he came to me clean and he told me about the, the talk they had with Spencer, I said, as much as I like Wu, this is the part of the game that I'm going to have to get rid of him. Because at that moment, he wasn't valuable to me. Right. But now, knowing that we're going into another big challenge and Spencer can't win, Wu became much more valuable to me than Trish did. So right. again, every single day, the just like the stock market, you know, it fluctuated day by day. Yeah. So that night is tribal council. And this is whenever Spencer calls you out. And this was, this was, I really enjoyed watching Spencer during this, this tribal. But he's, he calls you out. Tony will lie to you. And if he is on this, if he's the final three, I am going to vote for him. And Tasha speaks up, I will too, little mm -hmm. liar. I will too. <laughs> and what does that do? I mean, what are you thinking when they're doing that? Oh, snap. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's what Shut I'm thinking. Shut up, please. <laughs> and I just sit there and I'm just going, and I'm just shaking my head just to, you know, I didn't want to get into an argument with them. The same thing with the construction work at Tribal. When was that? Do you remember when Jeff asked me what I do for a living? That was, uh, Sarah was on the jury already. Yeah, I'd say about four or five people were on the jury by then, yeah. Okay, see, the same thing with that. At Tribal Council, is not a place where you want to get into arguments with people. You don't want to get into a, a, a match on who's telling the truth and who's not. So right. when Jeff asked me about the construction worker, that was not the time for me to say, you know what, Jeff, I lied to these people. I'm really a cop. So I went along with the plan that I was a construction worker because at that point, Cass, Jeremiah, Tasha, and Spencer did not know I was a cop. Right. So as soon as as soon as Jeff asked me, and then you know a lot of people again, this guy's stupid. He doesn't know if he's a cop or if he's a construction worker. No, I know what I was doing. Those four people still thought I was a construction worker. So right. I can't say to Jeff that, hey Jeff, I lied to these four people. Tribal council is not a place where you want to get into into that stuff. So when Spencer was talking about that stuff, I just let him say what he said. Back when we got at that camp, I say, hey guys, you know what Spencer's trying to do? He's trying to pit us all against each other. He ain't voting for me. He just wants you guys to get rid of me so he can take the reins and control you guys. So that was my, that's what I told him when we got back to camp. Yeah. So Jeremiah's voted out that night. Anything else, David, about that before we go on? No. Nah, we covered it. So let's get to the auction. Was that as short as it appeared, or was there more we didn't see? It, 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 obviously, it's longer than what we see on TV, but uh, but it was pretty short because he, you know, everybody got their food that they wanted, and then me and Spencer just sitting there not doing anything. Yeah. There was one point actually where uh, where I got really really angry at Jeffra. Uh, Jeffra just came back from the cave. That's when they were eating all those ribs. That's right. when they were conspiring to get rid of me. And you came to the auction, and Tasha bids eighty dollars on the quesadillas, and before I could say no, nobody vote, because I wanted Tasha out of it, because I know she was waiting. So before I could say no, nobody vote. Jeffrey raises a hand and says a hundred, and she beats Tasha out of out of the out of the auction. So now Tasha has a five hundred dollars again. Yeah. And I was like, come on, guys, come on, Jeffrey. You just came from a cave. You just finished eating lavish. Relax, chill out. You're ninety pounds. Let's try to get the let's try to keep the advantages from the enemy. You know. Did, and, did you tell and, her this, or were you thinking this? Thinking that. Th I'm oh. not gonna say nothing. I was just thinking that. Right. But my mouth opened. I was ready to scream, no! Because when Tasha said 80 bucks, I was so happy. That's it. That puts her out. So right. if nobody votes against her. Her 80 bucks is gone. She can't. She can't bet 500 dollars. Right. So that's what I. That was what's going on through my mind there. Woo! Eating those ribs next to me. I. I, I, oh. I was getting. I was sick to my. It felt like a kangaroo kicked me in the stomach. That's all right. Later on, he got sick, so it's all good. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, it looked to me like Propes got a little frustrated. This this auction did not go the way any auction has gone in the past. It, it was it was a it was a buyer's market, you know, like yeah. hey, whatever you wanted. You say twenty dollars, it's yours. You say four dollars, right. it's yours. Because you know, once somebody got some food, they were happy with it. They were content with it. And the only two people, well, three people, Tasha didn't want to. She, Tasha said later on she was saving it for an advantage or another clue. So she wasn't gonna bet on any food at that point. Right. She realized she bet eighty dollars. She was like, at this point, let me just stop. Me and Spencer weren't gonna do anything. So there's three of us that were out of the auction. The right. rest of the people had food. So what, right. that's it. Auction's over. All right. So Probes calls production and goes, Plan B. <laughs> I, I'm sure before because they 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 are interview us. When you go right. to the auction, what do you got? Are you gonna be bidding on the biggest food? Are you the best yeah. looking food? And then then like I ain't bidding on nothing. I'm waiting right. for an advantage and that's it. So they right. already know Tony's adamant about it. Chances are he's not bidding on food. So that's how they come up with their plans just to have it probably. Yeah, yeah. 
because he had that little he had those rocks underneath that table ready to go right. and I'm sure there was probably three or four just in case two other people held off sure sure David anything else about the auction no I see what the cameraman is talking about because he's covering like all of my notes and the comments <laughs> that he makes from around our questions yes <laughs> I know it's great isn't it I know I'm, I'm moving down to the next episode <laughs> well I like it whenever you get back to camp and you're and you're trying to convince the whole tribe that this advantage you have is actually a disadvantage. Yeah, that's 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 BS. Yeah, and, and I'm sitting there going, Tony, come on, but, nobody's buying that. But you know, but I put my sympathetic look on. I put my sympathetic. Oh, yeah, I know Spencer, man, that sucks. It's just dumb luck, you know. You you know, it could have been either one of us. But check it out, Wu ate the, Wu ate the ribs, so he's energized, so he'll probably beat me in the next challenge because he's energized. I'm not. So and I and I played it off that that was an advantage for an immunity challenge. That's how I played it off. I didn't tell him it was for an idol. Oh right, you know, right. My opponents, yeah, my opponents did not know it was an idol. They thought it was a it was an advantage. And I told them that I can use it in the next three challenges, whichever one I decide to use it. I could just bring it along with me. That's what yeah. but Spencer knew. I was full of it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Spencer's so like, man, Tony's coming up with stuff I've never heard before. Yeah, yeah. he knew I was full of it. <laughs> yeah. So day thirty comes along, and sure enough, you find another idol. Beautiful, man. I was I was loading up that bag of tricks. Woo! Tasha wins immunity again. Now you had to be getting a little worried about Tasha continuing to win immunities. You you know what? I I was actually um, I actually didn't really pay too much mind to that because my alliance was terrified of that. So as long as my alliance was terrified of them, I knew I had them as shields. So I knew I could go within my alliance, destroy my alliance, and when it was time for me to vote. For Spencer and Tasha, I would have their support because they want those people gone. They right. wanted Spencer and Tasha gone ASAP. So as long as they were in the game, they had tunnel vision. They did not even see me. They didn't care about me. All they cared about was getting rid of Tasha or Spencer. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All right. So, you know, so, so here's where it looked like. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I go. What? No, as long as as long as the threats on the other alliance. Right. If they're within your own alliance, then you have problems. But that was beautiful that they were in the opposing alliance. So I said, you know what? The longer they're around, the better off I am because they will not. They're not going to get rid of me so they can side with Spencer and Tasha because they don't want to go to the end with them too. They know those right. two will win. So nobody, the people that don't want to go with you to the end, you're not going to get rid of some. You're not going to get rid of me before you get rid of somebody you don't want to go to the end with. Right. That was, that was what's going on. They were blinded by that. Yeah, that seemed to be the ongoing theory that nobody can beat Tasha or Spencer at this point because their yeah. tribe is sitting over there on the jury. So you're right. As long as those two are in the game, one of them's going to lose. Only one of them can win the challenge. So at some point, they're going to be going one to two. It, that's exactly it. And so yeah. that's why when Spencer was bringing up those points, get rid of Tony, get rid of Tony, they can't get rid of Tony because they got to get rid of you two first. got to get rid of you right. and Tasha first. Yeah. Right. So this is whenever Spencer does his master plan of convincing you that the girls were going to get together, but you you are adamant that you were already concerned about that and we're going to do something about it. Spencer knows. I mean, if you ever get to talk to him, he knows. I, I came to him and I said, yo, Spencer, listen, man, it looks like these these girls are trying to form an all-girls alliance. And, and that's when he started feeding into it. But I didn't need him to feed into it. I even left him my confessional. I said, listen, Spencer's in a desperate position. He could tell me whatever he wants. I'm going to take matters into my own hands. And I, and I clearly stated in my confessional, I said, today it might not be a girls' alliance. What happens when there's four girls and two guys? Right. What happens? Their only move, their only move is to join together and get rid of the two guys. Right. That's their only move. So I didn't need anybody to convince me of that. Yes, he pointed out the obvious that it could be a girls' alliance forming, but I already knew what I had to do. I knew that I didn't want four girls against two guys. No way, right. no how. Had Tasha not won that immunity, she was going home. Right. So this is one of my favorite parts of the whole series. Whenever you go up to Wu and go, hey, we need a girl out tonight. And he goes, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. See, because Wu, Wu wanted to be honorable with his alliance. He wanted to, He was sad, happy with his alliance. He was like, you know, we're going to stay strong. So every time I approached him and said, hey, Wu, we're going to have to get rid of somebody in our alliance, it was like, whoa. Yeah. You know, like he was like, wow. And then I had to, and then, you know, and then, but he knew too. He saw what was happening. And right. that's why I questioned him. I, I just wanted to make sure he knew what was going on. I didn't want to be the one that was feeding him it. I wanted him to tell me, yes, Tony, I see it's all girls, the number ratio. And he said it. And once he said it, I was like, all right, Wu, there's no point of me trying to convince you. You know what's going on. You see it with yourself. Right. So that's why you have to get rid of Jeffra and not Spencer. Yes, absolutely. Because, again, right. keep, keep, again, keeping the enemy was beautiful because everybody was scared of the enemy. So as right. long as I kept the enemy, I was good enough to start dwindling down the numbers of my alliance. Right. 
All right, well, let's get to the uh, – unless you got something else, David, before we no, get to the No, my next cast. question is were you worried about Trish or about Cass what? Well, the whole Cass misunderstands him thing. Well, that's what my well, – before that, were you worried about Trish after turning on Jeffra without without Trish? No, Don't I wasn't worried her. Yeah, I wasn't worried about that at all because Jeffra publicized. She came out clean and told us all that she was going to flip. So that was real easy to convince Trish. Hey, Trish, you know why I did that? And Trish says, yes, I know right away because she was right. going to flip on us first. So that was easy. Yeah. You didn't tell Trish because you four women could have gotten together. <laughs> and, and I couldn't tell Trish that. And that's right, why you know, the same thing with Tasha. You know, like a lot of people say, yeah, but how do you think Tasha's going to vote with you if she's forming an all-girls alliance? But that's why I left it up to Spencer. I say, hey, Spencer, if that's your girl and she wants to get deep in the game with you, you got to go talk to her. I'm not talking to her. I'm not going to try to convince her against a girl's alliance. That's your job. All right. All right. Okay, so the next day, Cass misunderstands you. Now, uh, we've all had this happen where someone – we've been lying. We've been like, – like, like when I was a teenager, you know, I lied to my parents about all kinds of stuff. And the one time I tell the truth and they think I'm lying, I just think it's the worst thing in the world and I, and I just can't let it go. That's what it felt like happened to you. It felt like you kind of let your emotions get involved, and you couldn't just let it go. Am I yeah. right, or or well, what? You know, I mean, a lot, a lot, yeah, a lot of it was emotions. I was, I was pissed off. I was like, yo, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're destroying the game right now by acting like this. You know, nobody was talking about you. You know, I want, I, I, it's important for me for you to believe me that I'm telling you the truth. And she just kept going on and on with her theories and, and why she, that's a classic liar. When he's trying to, right. you know, when she was saying, that's a classic whatever she was saying. And right. I'm like, come on, Cash, you got to believe me. But again, you know, again, I was emotional at that point, And I was like, you know what, I'm going to get rid of this girl because I had it in my power. I could have got rid of her if right. I wanted to. That's the point where I had the idol, right? I could have easily got rid of her, easily. Right. But I didn't because I didn't play an emotional game. Right, but I, okay, so I guess what I'm seeing is if you had been talking about her, I think you would have reacted to her completely differently. Oh, no, of course, of course. I would have been, no, I didn't talk about you. Yeah, you heard something wrong, and that would have right. been it. But it and bothered me. Because I really, yes, because she truly believed that I was talking trash on her, and that's not what I do. I don't do that. I don't talk trash about people. But, right. you know, a thief will always think somebody's stealing from them. You know, yeah. a liar can always think somebody's lying to them, and that's what she did. Every confessional, Tony's a jerk, Tony's an idiot, Trish is a turd. She didn't stop. She just, there was no reason for all that, man. Right. You, not once have you did you hear me or anybody talk bad about anybody in the game. You're playing the game. You know, beat us, beat us in the game. You don't have to be, beat us with your verbally beat us and abuse us behind the scenes. You know, no reason for it at all. So no, I didn't call you a B. I didn't call you whatever you thought I called you. And right. it was and it, it meant a lot to me because listen, I don't know what kind of game you're playing, but that's not the game I'm playing. I'm playing here. I'm trying to beat you guys, but I'm gonna do it with respect. You know. And she just had no respect for people. Hmm. Now, you, you know, you have the advantage of being out there, and we just have the advan the disadvantage of the edit. Yeah. You know? so. but, 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 you see, but you see the edit, though. She's the only one that calls people's name. She was the only one. Tony's a jerk, an idiot, a moron, you know, a turd. I don't need to explain myself to these idiots talking about Tasha and Trish when they were in the water. You yeah. know, she, she didn't stop. She just didn't stop. There was no reason for that. So, so part of the reason that you might, so part of the thing that you don't like about Cass's game or Cass's approach, is that she made personal attacks even in the confessionals. That's come on, Dwayne. You, there's no reason for that, especially in the confessionals. There's no reason for you to call people what you're calling them. And you even see me in one confessional. I say, you know what, Cass is probably a beautiful person because me and Cass had a good relationship too. You know, don't you know they just show the part we were fighting, but we went hunting for crabs. We went fishing. We talked right. about her daughter. We talked about her life. You know, her, her farm, because she does really have an animal farm, but I thought right. that was all she did. But right. we had a good relationship out there, and Cass, when she's human, she's great, you know? But then she, yeah. she she turns into this devil, you know? And then, you know, like me, and I said in confession, I said, you know what, Cass is probably a beautiful person in the world, but in the game, she's horrible, you right. know? And I never talk bad about her. Well, and, you know, she's not the only one. Morgan had plenty to say about plenty of people. Morgan? You know? Yeah, in in, in 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 her confessionals, Cass isn't the only one who used confessionals I, to demean other people. I'm I'm trying to think. I, I believe it was only Morgan saying something about Cass. I don't think. Well, still, Morgan, no matter who you're saying it about, you're still saying it. Because they had a fight. They had a fight. Remember that well, big fight that they had? Well, I know, but I'm just well, saying. All right, but anyway, anyway, let's let's get off those two. Let's get back to Tony. Wayne wants to defend Cass, man. 
No, he can do that when Cassie. No, no, I, no. I wasn't trying yeah. to defend her. I was, I was saying that the Morgan also did that, and I really, I, I didn't pay attention to see who else did it. So. All right, but anyway, anyway, they win reward. Spencer Wu and Cash win reward. What I want to know is how far did Wu get in his sentence to you in his lie? Did you realize <laughs> it was lying? Yeah. About <laughs> I'm not talking about strategy. See, see again. Pre-game, I even said in my in one of my interviews pre-game, I said in a strategic game, in order to beat your opponent, you got to think like them. So when Wu went when Wu went on that reward challenge, I'm thinking to myself, Wu or Cass, this is what I this is what I would do if I was in that situation. If I was Spencer, what would I say to Wu? So I already knew exactly what was gonna go on. Hey Wu, this is your time to make a big move in the game. You haven't been making big moves. This is it right here. This is it right now. You have to do this. We got me. We got Spencer. We got uh, Cass, and we could get rid of Tony. Especially when I'm telling him I have an idol. When he comes back to me and he starts telling me anything but that, I'm like, you know what? You're lying. Right. Exactly. Because this this whole episode was edited to set up, you know, Cass turning, flipping back to her old group because of the argument that y'all had, and then she gets to go on the reward with them, and it just to me it's one of those things where you got to set up a lie, you got to make sure it works. And but this is what I like about Survivor late in the season where things just get stirred up. The opportunities arise, and these these mixes come up, and these flip chances come up. But at the same time, at the last second, we get the idea where Cass says, "Wait a minute, maybe Tony's the one I want to take to the end, and not yeah. these other people that we're talking about voting out." Yeah. Well, what I liked was was Wu is talking to you, and instead of just saying, "Yeah, whatever," you go and explain to him why that would be an incredibly stupid move. And he has no response. <laughs> what, 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 what do you do? You get caught with your pants down. Yes, what do you do? Exactly. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know what to do about that. You're, you're stuck. You're done. Yeah. So on the next immunity challenge, uh, let's see. Oh, that's the one where y'all had to run. Was that like 50 yards of running each way? Oh, man. Yeah, I think, you know what? I think it was from... from from before that turn, that was about, I'd say, maybe 150 feet there. And then, yeah, you're right. It was probably about 300 yards total. Oh, Lee. Mm. And that lasted about 30 minutes. Y'all must have been dead. I I, I I don't know about the rest of the men, but I know I was dead. I was done. How close were your numbers? Were you only a few numbers off? You know what it was? Those stupid those stupid crabs. Those, those, those stupid uh, coconut crabs. They were on top of each other, and I could never get those right. That was the only thing I couldn't get right. Those crabs. Yeah. They kept moving. I went from 18 to 19 to 20. It was to a point where we all had the same strategy. We were like, you know what? We're not going to go back and count something. We're just going to keep changing the numbers. We're going to run back as many times as it takes. Yeah. Because once you get your numbers, you got to go. If it's wrong, you got to go back either right. to count or touch. It's like touching home base. You got to go touch home base before you come back and change your number. So yeah. we got to the point where we weren't even counting no more. We were just running back, touching home base, coming back and changing the dial to the numbers. And Spencer did it good. Spencer came. Well, got it. What was your first strategy? Was it to try and get every number or just get a few numbers? Two. I just wanted two because I knew it was going to be so much. So I just wanted two. Yeah. I, I did the hardest one first, which was the bamboos, like all tied up. And I did yeah. the masks that were next to it. So I was pretty confident that I got those two good. And yeah. then I went back to the crabs and I kept saying to myself, these crabs, they keep moving. They keep you, They were on top of each other. You don't know if it was a, a crab or it was a dark spot under there. You know, there right. was rocks in there. You know, so it was tough. Yeah. Tasha, unfortunately for her, did not win. It, it it was it was a tough one for her. Yeah, because but man. but and, and but that's what happens, you know. That's what happens in Survivor when you go out there and and you want to go on immunity runs. Second, you run out of that immunity run, you're out of yeah. gas, you're out of the game. Yeah. So me, I was glad I wasn't winning anything. You know, everybody yeah. knew hey, Tony's not a challenge threat. We don't care about Tony, but I won the biggest challenge of the game, you know, and that's yeah. what counts. And sure. Tasha does not win Best Actress award. Oh yeah, well with that too, and you know, and, and she uh, she left some interviews that I was listening to. She was like, I don't know why Tony said that, um, because I was never scrambling. I didn't have to scramble. But yet you see her getting stood up by LJ. Um, you, she came to me at one point and she said, Tony, uh, can we work together? When it was me, Tasha, and Trish, and uh, LJ. No, I'm sorry, me, Trish, and Tasha were back at camp when Wu, Cass, and Spencer went on the reward. Yeah. First thing, first thing Tasha says to me, hey Tony, is there any way we can work together? Is there anything that I can say to you and interest you in anything? And I say, listen, here's the deal. I said, if you can get me some information when Spencer gets back and these people are plotting against me, if Cass and Wu are plotting against me, I will work with you. I will work with you. And I was telling that. So she was always scrambling, and I'm giving her props because that's what Survivor is about. You got to scramble. Right. She, yeah. As a matter of fact, when I'm watching the show right from the beginning, she's the one I wanted to scramble and and and. Uh, uh, Garrett didn't want to, and she got upset about it. 
So for you to say in your interviews that you don't know where Tony got that from, that you scrambled, I don't know where she got that from. But I was giving her props. I was giving her credit. She was yeah. playing the game. You know, yep. but if she if she wants to say that she wasn't scrambling, then you weren't playing then. If you only relied on immunity challenges, if that was your only game, that's not a game, a survivor. Right. Right. Because eventually you're going to lose and then you're going to get voted out. You're out of gas. Yep. You're done. Yep. So let's get to the mud challenge. The mud challenge. Nice. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you looked in the bucket and you saw there was a false bottom. <laughs> so, so, here's the deal with the mud challenge, right? I mean, again, common sense, right? You have you have all these people that are going in the mud and they're rolling around, getting mud all over their back and their front, and they're just rolling around in the mud, getting mud on them. How are you going to get the mud off your back? It's impossible. Right. You're not going to get exactly. that mud. You're wasting your time getting all that mud on your back and you're rolling around. All I did was I went there face first, flat there, and I ran back to the bucket and got everything that I could off. And right. I, I filled that bucket up in like four minutes. Right. You know, we, because <laughs> there, were, there were two – huh? It was great. It's like we're not even gonna have to weigh these things, y'all. Come on. There's yeah, no, mud was, on the ground. I was, I was. It. They edited it out, but I was screaming and cursing. Why couldn't this be an immunity challenge? Oh my God! I, I, it figures that this is only pizza. <laughs> is there any clue? Was there any clues in the pizza? No, no, no clues. I looked. I looked. Yeah. There was nothing. Now, during this reward is when you again change the game and put it on its head, and. Production has to play along, just like they respected your game with the Spy Shack. Absolutely. You know, this is the, normally I would hear probes say something about challenge. You know, immunity idols can only be played through here. But whenever you start talking about this is good through Final Four, if they interfere with that, then they're interfering with your game. Absolutely. Right? So what a great idea. It it, it it worked, man. Again, it was situational. It, it worked. I knew that I didn't have nothing else to fall back on because I can't win the challenge for the life of me. So I said to myself, you know what? I have two idols. Both of them expire at the same time. This is my ticket to the final three. And I really thought it was a final three, and I set everything up for a final three. Right. And then you see the twist, man, and that's how the game is. If you can't adapt right away with the game, if you can't change directions with the wind, you're done. Right. And that so made my idol... And for somebody like a fan like Spencer, that made that lie so much more believable because he's saying to himself, you know what? That's why he could use his idol at Final Four because it's down to a Final Two, and he put that together. Right. Well, you know, I mean, it just people have to give you props for that because that was thinking on your feet, and it. I don't know that it eventually saved you because I think they were going to take you to the end anyway, but still well, it, it was neat to watch you use the idol in a way that it wasn't even designed to be played. Well, here, here's the thing with that. They weren't going to take me to the end. They needed to get rid of Spencer. You understand? Right. So even right. if my – yeah, so so they had no choice. Again, keeping the enemy that they most fear that can win the game is the best thing that I could have done. Keeping Spencer and Tasha as long as I did was beautiful for my game. Yep. Yeah, because getting rid of them too early puts the target back on you. And that's it. And that's it. Yep. David? I'm telling you, he's covering it, man. He's covering all my notes. Every time he starts talking – Come on, man. Guys, guys had, off the page. You guys had what? Uh, how many months now? Three months I've been telling you. Start writing them down. Start writing. Every time you guys criticize a move of mine, I know. and I say, you know okay. what? I'm... Okay, I got one. Hey, the world we're not even to the point where you and I had a big old argument, Tony. I, I, got, I got one <laughs> for so you. so many arguments. The world wants to know, why a llama? Where did the okay. llama come from? All right, so, so Cass, she went with the story that she's an animal handler. She had apalkas, she had yam, uh, llamas, and reindeer. So I picked one of the three. I, I didn't know how to read your sounds. So I just said, let me just start screaming like a nut. But, you know, at that point I was, again, em emotions. Did I want to do that? No, I didn't want to do that. But, see, Cass, you know, you, you got to know who you're playing with, too. Like, I wouldn't get into a fight like that with Jeffro. I wouldn't get into a fight like that with somebody that was respected in the game. Cass, they didn't have respect for us. So if I fight with Cass, they're all going to side with me. And that's why, you know, even in tribal council, I could make fun of Cass a little bit because I knew the jurors – didn't respect her, and they would side with me more because I dislike Cass in front of them, you know? Right. Kind of a no-lose situation. That's exactly what it is. And, and not only that, you got the support of them. They, they like you even more because you're, 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 you're doing what they would want to do. Okay, so here's where you and I disagree, Tony. All right? All right. At the risk of you turning off this podcast like you did the one, the one podcast of ours that you turned off early. All right. Was this episode because you watched all of our recaps, correct? Okay, go ahead. Awesome. I know so, where you're going. I know. So you talk with Cass, 
Yep. And Cass's plan is to go get Wu to not trust you. Okay. Right? So she starts talking to Wu. I say it worked. He, okay. It it made him a little wary of you. Okay. So how so how is that not strategy? Because she could have went home. That's why. I could have sent her home. So it would have backfired. It, was that a, a risk worth taking that I could send you home that night? Especially when you know I have one idol and I'm telling you I might have two. Is that worth a risk to make you, Wu not like me? When you I'm think telling she was you being I'm confident? Thinking, was she being me? confident that she wasn't going to go? Say it again? Was she being overconfident that she wasn't going that she was going to be taken to the end? She, she wasn't thinking. Either that's, that or that's, she that's was. That's my point. There was no strategic reason behind that because she risked her going home, and she even said it. I think I'm I'm in trouble. Could it have cost me the game? I think it could have. She even said it. She admitted it later in the confessionals that she could have went home. I could have sent her home. But then, even if she goes home, it's yeah. her. I think part of her goal was to sabotage your game. Once again. That she got pleasure out of sabotaging people's game instead of her wanting to win the game. That why don't you see this? That's her goal. Her goal was to mess everybody else's game up. Well, it wasn't for the win. Seventeen other people's games. That's my point, though. She wasn't playing to win. She was just playing to hurt other people's other people's chances of winning. She wasn't playing anything to make herself win. At least not in my eyes or anybody okay. else's eyes that were on the island with her. All right. So what you're saying is just make sure I understand. Yeah, it did get Wu to not trust you a, a little bit, and it might have hurt your game, but it did not advance her game, and therefore you do not think it was a good move. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. That's she, correct. she was ruining a plan that she was just including it, included in. Right. She, 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 it was a lock. Hey, listen, Cass, I'm telling you right now, Wu told me this, and I'm not going to do anything about it because I want to go to the end with you, and that's why I'm telling you this. Right. I'm a person you want to go to the end with because me and you are the only ones with blood on our hands. What's the deal? Let's make this happen. And then you're going to go back and say that to Wu? That makes no sense at all, Dave, Dwayne. Makes no sense at yeah. all. That's okay. You can tell Dave. Both of you. <laughs> well, I'm sure Dave understands that, that how that I'm makes no sense at all. I'm with hey, you. I replied. I, I showed you that I understood your, your all right. point. Eventually. All right. <laughs> I want to make sure he comes on the show. I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree. Yeah. <laughs> but but, but that, was the, that was the point behind that. When you're telling me that, hey, listen, Tony, you know, because she knew she she had. Is, what? Are you going to get beat up, Dwayne? Yeah, my wife's doing something. I don't know what she's doing. All right, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I'm still here. <laughs> so so the, the, the point is she knew that Spencer Spencer wins if he gets to the end. Right. If she goes with Wu, Wu don't have no blood in his hands. She might not have a chance with Wu. She knows that I had blood in my hands. I backstabbed a lot of people. I lied to a lot of people. I betrayed a lot of people. She knows I was her best bet to go to the end with. Exactly. Yes, I'm taking you to the end. You come with me to the end. Let's go to the end together. Fine, Tony. That sounds like a plan. Why do you go and tell Wu anything? Why disrupt anything with Wu? Causing, causing a risk that you might go home tonight because I have the power to do that. The only thing I think he was pull, going from was she was trying to she was pretty confident. You were uh -oh. still her, your best. She was still your best bet to go to the end, but at the same time hoping that she could convince Wu to possibly turn. But see, she obviously didn't know Wu because I think Wu was going to vote for you no matter what happened or how he left the game. He would have taken it as a sign of respect that you felt you couldn't beat him. So I I, I think Wu was a lost cause for her to go after if that's what she was doing, trying to get Wu to vote for her instead of you. I, I, I just think that at that moment, you know, you got to take calculated risks, and that risk was not worth it at all, at right. all. The game was right. almost over. You had you you were you you could you could if I was an emotional player, you were going home. You were done. You were done. Your game was over. Yeah. So that's all how right, come, so that's that's how, and she she knew that. So that's why I didn't see that as it had no strategy at all. It didn't okay. make sense at all. All right. So at at tribal after Spencer um apparently just totally destroyed you in that immunity challenge. With the puzzle, <laughs> he's still trying to do that puzzle. Yeah. But anyway, Spencer will probably send you a whole box of those puzzles for Christmas or something. You know what? Yeah. I, I, you know what? I wouldn't even care. I'm better off not winning any challenge because you've seen the people that won the challenges. They were public yeah, right. enemy number one out there. Right. That's right. So I'm so better you, off. You whip out both idols, play one of them. Trish goes home, and you still leave it out there that, and this one can be used next time. And Probst was about to say. Well, that's the last, and then he has to stop. <laughs> yep, and, and that's why I presented that when I did, right as soon as I went to tribal council before Jeff even had a chance to say anything. And that's right. why I did. I sent a subliminal message to everybody there. Hey, listen, guys, 
I don't want no souvenirs. This is the last day that I could play this idol at five. I'm playing it. I know I don't have no votes, but I'm playing it. And the next time around, I'm not holding on to this souvenir. I'm getting rid of it. Because I don't want them to say, you know what, let's throw the votes at him just in case he's bluffing. He might right. want to keep that. No, 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 no. Tony doesn't want to keep nothing. I'm playing it. I want you guys to know I'm playing it. You know, that was the whole point behind me giving rid of, get, getting rid of sacrificing my idol. I wanted to keep both of them. Right. But I well, wanted to send the message, make it clear to them that I'm playing the idols when I when is the last time I could play them. Were you afraid that that Propes might mess that up for you? I, you know what? I didn't even I didn't even think that he might do that. And when I first when I first went into tribal council and I and I came up with that plan, I didn't think he would. If I was scared, somebody might ask Probes, "Hey Jeff, what, what, what can you tell us what these special idols do? What the yeah. special powers are?" I was scared that, that. Then what is he gonna tell them? Right. What I don't know. Told them. I don't know. Maybe he could say, "Listen, only the person I find it knows the rules." You know, maybe he could have said that. But I think, they, I, I think it would have depended on the would have depended on the exactness or the specifics of the question. Right. If he's telling the truth, can that idol be played the next round? Other than, do you know the rules? He could have said, "I didn't find the idol. I don't have the rules." Well, right. so the same way he could say that. Listen, I I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. You're gonna have to wait and find out. Call his yeah. bluff. Well, I, like I remember, whenever Abby Maria didn't have an idol. And she acted like she had an idol that that that, that was the advantage and Propes just let her do it. You know? And that's that's the beauty of that game, man. You you know, right. you catch them off guard, you catch the producers off guard when you come up with stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So how about that that family visit? It was kind of disappointing for you at wasn't it? You know, you know, um, like we all talked about it. Spencer and I both talked. We were like, you know what? I'm so glad that they don't have a family visit because we're so focused in the game. We don't need anybody to throw – you know, it makes you soft, man. It breaks you down at the knees. You know, it makes your knees right. buckle, you know? You don't want that. You're out there. You're playing a grimy game. Don't don't, don't bring me back to reality. Let me stay right where I'm at. So I, I really did not want a family visit. But when the boat came and we seen it was family, I was like, oh, man, I was sifting through the people and I was looking for my beauty, but instead I got the beast. Yeah. So you know, I see my boy and I'm like, oh, what the hell are you doing here, man? And then he starts talking to me about my baby daughter, how she doubled in size. Because when uh, I left my daughter, she was four months in a swaddle. You know, yeah. in a swaddle thing. And she, she, you know, she just, she was like a plant. You know, you just right. fed her and watched her grow. No talking, nothing. And then he's telling me she went to the beach with my wife and she yeah. doubled in size. Oh, man. That, that, right oh. She's dating. See, that's what the producers want. They want right. your knees to buckle. They want your emotions to come out. This, this late in the game. It, it, you know what, but, uh, you know, it, it, it just hurts, man. It, it was tough. It was tough. But, again, you know, and, 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 again, man, it's just raw emotions out there. When when you have nothing else left, all you have is emotions, man. Right. Right. Well, the family visit helped Cass because never has there been such a comeback in a challenge. It was it was a very tough puzzle, man. And uh, man. I, don't, I think Cass said in her interviews it was a lot longer. We, we had a much bigger lead than it showed. We were up right. there for quite some time. You know, Spencer was off by one. He was off by one thing in the middle. He would have won immunity. Oh, my game would have been done. Yeah, it seemed like the backside of his. He was. He had the wrong piece because there was a hole that wasn't yes. being filled. And That's it. Um, I'm not even sure Cass finished the first leg because all the cameras and probes seemed to turn towards <laughs> the puzzles. I think they forgot she was even there at yeah, some she point. Just, all she just sudden, snuck she, up to the puzzle. All of a sudden, there's a splash, and Probst goes, "Oh, she's coming!" You know? yeah. <laughs> and then she's coming up to do the puzzle, and then she nails it. She was out of the game, man. She was out of the game. It was, I mean, first of all, you know, Cass was up there. She was terrified of the heights. She was saying, because I was right next to her, and she was like, oh, my God. She's like, I'm so scared of this. I'm so scared of this. And I, props to her, man. She's, I thought she was going to jump off or fall off or just give up on it. But she kept trying and trying and yeah. trying, and she, she did it, man. And she came again, just like the very last immunity. I know we're going to get there. But she just went into that puzzle, and the first shot, she got it right. A first shot. Yeah. It yeah. was awesome, and I was cheering for her, obviously, because I, I didn't want to spend in the game. That's right. So, you know, at that point, she was my best friend. Can I, get your, can I get your pieces for you? Absolutely. Yeah. And again, I'm surprised I, you didn't walk over there. And... Back to the value thing. She was the most valuable person to me at that point. That was right. awesome. Oh, man. So you show the worthless idol at, at Tribal, which That's I thought right. was great. I, I, put it, I put it on my – I put it on my – I walked in there like if it was an immunity necklace. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what I thought was so awesome was, I don't know if it was awesome, but y'all were so disappointed back at camp when it was the final three. Oh, yeah, you know? man. Y'all were like, oh. Yeah, no, it was it was like, you know, we were, all, we were all hurt. We were like, all right, one of us is going home now. We thought we made it. We thought mission accomplished. We made it to the end of the tunnel. 
and there's that twist again. They threw a yeah. twist, and 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 you know, like I know I was pretty. I felt confident that I was safe because if Cass won, she should have took me. If Wu wins, I'm gonna convince him to take me. You right. know, so I I felt again. You're never a hundred percent, but I I was in. I thought I was in good shape. So but that's still, why. Y'all, but still, you in you you in that tribal council, and you think we made it. The game is over, and then you're told, no, the game's not over. That's, that's that that's had a, to be a. That's why y'all were so down on that. That's night. a that's a dagger in the heart, man. Yeah. You know, and again, the way I played my idol to get me to final three, which I thought was final three, I was like, oh my god, I'm a genius. I made, I did it. Right. Man, was it the case, man? Uh. Uh-uh. And now you're not protected again. I'm, I got nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. by the way, I lied. This will get me to final two. Yeah. Just, just did I say lie. three? You know what? If if I had known, if I had known that it was the final two, I would have done that. I would have said yeah. this immunity island gets me to the end. So I, you guys do whatever you want. I don't even want to. I don't even want to join you in the immunity challenge. I don't yeah. have to play anymore. I'm not that's doing any more puzzles. I get to go eat with Probst. And that's it. And that's why I made it a point to like address the. You know, I wanted the jurors to know this is what this idol does. So I, right. I you know, I, again, I was in the game and I played the idol. I wanted them. I wanted them to give me props for that. Yeah. yeah. So, so when y'all go to that massive, what was that, like a football field size challenge? You know what? I think it was a little bit bigger. God, <laughs> it was, it was, It was intense. I mean, you've seen that, you're like, whoa. Right. Who, who followed who? Did you follow Wu or Wu followed you? No, Wu followed me in the, the, the first three. He followed right. me. And then the last one, I followed him, but then we broke apart, and he got there yeah. first. But the first three, he, he, we were both together. Was there a part of you that wanted to elbow him in the face and say, stop following me? No, 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 no. Because at that point, I was actually, I was saying, you know, I'd rather him win than Cass, you know? Okay. Okay. Yeah, because so, Wu, Wu winning kind of, you know, destroyed his game, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah no. That's I true, because Cass would have taken Wu, right, if she had won? I, I, I think I think I could have convinced Cass into taking me because it's not that I'm conning them, but I think I would have raised valid points to both of them. Say, oh, absolutely. Like, like, like Cass, I would go up to Cass and say, hey, Cass, hey, listen. You and I are the only ones with blood on our hands. You and I are the only ones that backstab these people. You and I are the only ones that the jurors are bitter against. You take someone like Wu, you're losing. You're going to lose right. this game because everybody loves Wu. He didn't hurt nobody. He might have not played the game, but he didn't hurt nobody. He has no blood on his hands, and he was honorable the whole game. So you have right. no shot going against Wu. If you want a shot, you got to take me. And that's pretty much what I said to Wu, but in the other way around. I told right. Wu, I said, Wu, what are you going to tell these jurors if you get rid of me? Your whole game was honor. It was playing with integrity. It was playing loyalty. You get rid of me right now, you go into the jury with nothing. No story to tell them about your game. Right. I got blood on my hands. You don't. I say, right. you take somebody like Cass. You know, like I went through the whole spiel with that. And it, and it made sense. You know, at the, at the, you know, you, you have to consider it. You know, I mean, that's right. how I feel. I feel like I made valid points to him. Sure. Well, well, well you took what you knew of him, just like you did with uh, Sarah, you knew that blood bond was everything to her, so you could play on that. Yes. And you knew that he was playing by the code, so you played on that. And that's exactly what I told him. I said, listen, Wu, you're a Taekwondo instructor. You came into this game, and you were playing with honor. You were playing with integrity. You were playing with loyalty. You get rid of me right now. You just threw your game in the garbage because you're going to go in front of those jurors. You can't tell them you play with honor. You can't tell them you play with integrity. And you can't tell them you play with loyalty because you just got rid of me. Right. You, know, you have no chance of beating Cass. Zero percent chance. You take me, it's 50-50. That was my pitch to him. Yeah. So again, was I, did, did I really believe that? Probably not. Right. But it was something that I think was a feasible lie. But that's, that's the part where we talked about earlier where you took yourself out of life and you played the game. Right. He kept himself in his personal life, in his personal code, and he stopped playing the game. Because we saw the, the obvious choice. And I, I was waiting for you to say when, when Jeff pulls up the card and says, Cass, I was waiting for you to look at Wu and go, really? You can yeah. take me to the end? Man, I, I was numb at that point. I was yeah. just completely numb. Even if it said Tony, I, I don't think I would have got up. They would have right. to come pick me up. I was just <laughs> frozen. But yeah, but, yeah. But, but but you know, but now you've seen interviews where Wu does talk, and you know, he really thought that he he was gonna beat me because he said, "Hey, listen, this guy backstabbed everybody. Right. He had blood in his hands. He betrayed a lot of people. So you know, he took he you know, it wasn't that he was stupid by taking me. He truly no. believed he was gonna beat me. And part of my job was to convince him that he could probably beat me. You know, right. But yeah. you didn't think he could beat you. Was that? You didn't think he could beat you, though. You know what, man, Dwayne? The thing, the thing about that game is, you know, you have to get your hands dirty, but not necessarily bloody. I don't right. think I got them bloody. I know I got them dirty, but I don't think I got them bloody. And I guess the outcome showed that, you know. Yeah. But I, 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 I didn't think. 
and that was the thing with me in the game. I never put my guards down thinking that I was comfortable enough where I could beat Trish, where I could beat Wu. I knew I couldn't beat Spencer 100%, but I never knew that I could beat anybody in that game. You know, right. I never said to myself, you know what, I could beat this person. The only person I felt like that was with Cass. With Cass, it was 100% guaranteed she can't beat me at the end. <laughs> she would not agree with you. Uh, well, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's why she played the game she played. <laughs> I, I tend to think you would have beat Cass too, but there you anybody, go. Anybody that goes up against Cass, I know, I know my tribe. I know who I played with. I know the people I played with. Anybody that goes up against Cass wins. Right. So go ahead, David. Well, I was going to go ahead and get to the final tribal. Yeah, let's do it. Go there. Was there, there were points where I really liked what you said about, like you said, you thanked Will, you gave him props for getting you there, for, for letting you come with him. And then you said, I'm here to answer questions. Ask me what you want to ask me. I'm going to tell you the truth because this is the time where it's going to be real Tony. And I'm going to tell you everything just happened for 38 days. Absolutely everything, especially LJ, especially Trish. I will tell all of you this. And by the time these people were, were talking and working, the look on your face was was like I was actually getting worried for you because you had this look that said, "Where? what's this? Am I losing this game? Oh am man! I, am I going to lose to this guy that's so sweet over here, and they're just tearing me apart? Do they not see that I was just playing a game? They they didn't give me a chance, David. Man, you saw that, and I told them I'm here to give you guys closure. I know you have a lot of questions. I know you have a lot of uh, you know you have a lot of beef with me. You know about the broken promises this and that. And I was there to answer them, man. And they didn't give me a chance to answer the questions. They just made statements to me. Yeah, because especially Jeffra, and I, and she's the sweet as can be, but she said I want you to own it. And you said, okay, I own it. I did all this. No, I want you to really own it. Okay, what do you want me to really say? Because I just really said that I own it. Everything. I took you all out because I couldn't beat any of you except for her, and he took her out. So I just owned everything I did. No, I want you to own it. And and, 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 I, and I wasn't good enough, and then she wanted me to say I was a villain. So I'm like, yeah. come on, man. I own my game now. Please don't make me go there. And but, I didn't want to say I'm a villain because I, I wasn't playing the game to be a villain, you know, and I didn't want to do that. Because right. as far as they were, my, my, my alliance was concerned, they knew everything I was doing was strategic. They knew I was protecting the alliance. That's what I kept drilling in their head. Every single person that got voted off, they, they all I was drilling into their head, listen, I was protecting the alliance. You broke your promise first. That's why I went after you. And that was my whole gameplay except for Trish. Yeah, I think you just differentiated between uh, villain and, and aggressive play with blood versus mud. Or getting dirt on your hands and getting blood on your hands. Exactly. And that's a big difference. But every move you made with your perfect record at Tribal Council, it showed that your paranoia and your aggressive play and your double talk and your boomerang play, all that worked because of the way you were playing. And like Spencer said, how can you not vote for the guy that ran the whole game? No matter how many idols he found, he ran the game. He ran every Tribal Council he went to. He got lucky and won that this cast lady flipped and oh. gave him that gift, but he took that and he ran with it. He picked up the reins that somebody else dropped and he ran with it all the way to the end. The only thing he did was he got Wu. Only thing that he didn't do was make Wu give you that, take you to the final. But you talked him into doing it. You used what you knew from the game, what you knew from Wu, and the relationship that you worked to build. You used that to get him to take you to the end. Like you said, that was your million dollar move. That was the move that got you the final prize. That was it, man. That it was all or nothing. I all, everything I worked hard for could have went. Right down the drain right then and then. Right down the toilet it could have went on day 38. Right. That would have been horrible. But, uh, but that owning it. Go, you know, go ahead. But that speech that Dave just said, that's exactly what I had in my mind to go into that tribal council, but they didn't give me a chance to say anything. Right. Man. I know. Right. I was getting frustrated. I'm like, Tony, stand up. Stand up. I say couldn't. something. Say something. <laughs> Yes. I couldn't, man. You know, at that point, you got to realize, again, you got to be aware of what's going on. I right. knew that they were hurt. They weren't necessarily bitter, but they were hurt and they wanted to vent. I'm not right. going to sit there and still try to get my two cents into it when all they want to do is get it off their chest. So right. I put my head down with sorrow. I had my sour puss face on because, you know, I was really feeling sad inside. But they're not going to know what I'm feeling inside. So I showed it with my facial expressions. I showed them, hey, guys, I'm sorry, man. I really didn't want to hurt nobody. You know, right. and I made it clear to them, like, hey, listen, I feel bad, and I'm so sorry about it. It's you funny know? because, I, like I, yeah, I've never gotten this out of a final travel. Maybe I've never looked at it from this way, but you said, you know, earlier we were talking about how there's that point you really don't want to be that person to vote out these people that you, you grow to love. You get to know these people, and you have to send somebody home. Somebody's got to come in second, but that's the part of the game that you hate. It's the emotional thing that you keep way back here in the back 
because if you want to win, you got to keep that back here. But when you got the final travel, you could see it all over your face. You could see it from the way they were talking, and it's like, wow, this is such an. And Wu's just going, ask me a question. I I did something. You know, yeah. let yeah. me let me own something. I'll own something. And they just kept going after Tony, after Tony, after Tony. I'm almost like, okay, if this is a landslide, they're just trying to make it not obvious yeah. because they are just doing nothing but trying to rip apart his season. When and then finally Spencer comes around and says it's his season. It's all because yeah. of him. All of this happened because of him. Right. Yeah, no, Spencer, Spencer, that young lad, man. Let me tell you, bro. That, that when he did that, man, I, I had some like my my heart started to get some lighter again. You know, I was like the dark... tears. I was looking for the tears. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but I was in a dark place, man. When these people, especially with Trish, you know, and I'm like, oh man, you know. And I know I heard Trish bad, and and I knew it was just, you know, when she again, they just wanted to vent. They wanted to show me what they felt, you know. Right. And I and I accepted it, you know. I accepted it, and I could only say I'm sorry. How many times can I say I'm sorry? Right. You know, I'm not going to go there and say, I'm not going to be a Russell. I played you out. I played you out. I did this to you. I don't care. I'm You're stupid, and I'm not. I wasn't going right. to do that, man. I was, That's I was not just, the time for you to prove your point. Absolutely not, and I didn't care about proving a point. Not then, not now. I don't care. I'm right. not going to say I'm better than you. I, I didn't, I'm not going to say I played you. I'm not going to say I witted you. Right. I won the game. I'm happy with it, but I'm going to be cool about it. Right. Talk about owning it. Whenever Trish asks you, you know, was it worth it to you to sacrifice your dead father to win a million dollars, which I thought was a, wow, what a question. Seriously? What but, am I going to say, Dwayne? But you own it. Yes, it was worth it because just like you said, I didn't, I'm not, I'm not really trying, well, I don't remember. What did you tell Poverty? Well, my, my strategy wasn't to go in the game and start swearing on my family to get right. uh, to advance myself in the game. It was genuine. It was real. And Trish knew that. And again, I try to tell people, listen, they would not have voted for me against a player like Wu that was likable. If they voted for me, if I was going up against somebody that was hated, that's one thing. They could say, all right, Tony won by default. I went up against somebody that they loved, that they liked. He didn't hurt nobody. And they still gave me the votes because they knew who I was as a person. You know, they knew I wasn't a grimy person. Yes, I made those promises. Yes, I made those swears on my family. But they knew my heart was in the right place at that time. They knew it was. Was this a lot of the um, footage that we did not see? Because you talked about where you um, gave people your food, where you helped people, you kept building the fires, kept providing water. Is this, you think this is a lot of the relationship you built during that time? And that's all real. It was all genuine. It was nothing strategic about me, you know, like sometimes... You know, everybody was sitting down in the shelter when it was pouring rain. I didn't care. I was already wet. So if they wanted their water bottle and they're like, oh, did anybody see my water bottle? Yeah, it's over there. I'll go get it for you. It was a strategy. It was it was who I am, you know, and that's real. And, and, and that's why I've formed real good bonds with these people, and they all respected me as a person. And that's the difference between an aggressive player and a villain. A villain would sit in the shelter and not want to get anybody anything and just want to take care of themselves and not deal with other people because they think they're controlling the game. And that's what I, and that's why when Jeffro kept saying owners, be a villain, I didn't want to say I'm a villain. I, I mean, I don't, I didn't think I was a villain. I know I did what I had to do, but I was part of the game. But now that's the thing with the aggressor in this game. You know, someone like Spencer, you know, he, he didn't, he, he never had the, he was never in the position to get blood on his hands or get dirt on his hands. Right. So that's why he's the hero and I'm the villain because I had, I was in that position where I gotta hurt people to advance my game. You know, but the you aggressor. But your expression was honest, and it was right. Be villain? You think I'm a villain? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm a survivor. I'm just here to play the game. I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm sorry right. that you got your feelings hurt, but there's only one winner. You know, there's not there's not 18 winners. I, I wasn't going to go and do that, Dave, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was that's, right, because, that's right, because you knew when to be humble. Right. Final tribal is the time to be humble. Oh, don't yeah. worry. I was doing it at home. I was, I was giving them all your answers at home while I was watching. You know what, man? Let me tell you. Like I told Poverty, man, in that in a game when the stakes are that high and you hurt somebody, those wounds are real and they're deep and they scar forever. Those those people are scarred forever. Even if it's a small little scar, it hurts, man. It hurts that you had a chance of a lifetime to win a million dollars. One in seventeen, you don't have that chance in life. You know, mm -hmm. and 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 somebody that promised you, I swear to you, I'm gonna go with you, me and you to the end, and you really believe that, and then they hurt you and they stab you in the back, and you lost your opportunity for a million dollars. That hurts, man. It yeah. hurts so and The bad. worst part is they're stewing and stressing in, in anger over there at Ponderosa just waiting to come back and see you and vote against you. I mean, they're just sitting over there talking about it and talking about it and eating and pooping and going to air-conditioned rooms, but they're just talking about it, and that's got a way on your mind as well. That What are they over there stressing over? 
and, and that's exactly why every time I voted somebody out, I made sure, I, you know, the, the remaining players, I made sure they saw that I was remorseful about it, that yeah. I didn't take pleasure in it. You know, when Trish, when I voted Trish out, everybody knew I was heartbroken at that. So guess what? When Spencer went to Ponderosa, I'm sure he said, hey, Trish, Tony was hurt over that. So you know it wasn't personal. You know he was hurt. You know it was strategic. You know he did what he had to do. And that's what happened. I made it. I wanted people to know what I was really feeling when I did these blind sides. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to go around bragging about it. Hey, we had some um, great questions sent in, but you covered 95% of them. You All really right, did. We got 5% more. Who, um, who's the most underrated player from this season? Other than yourself, who do you think was the most underrated? You, I don't think I was underrated, Dave. No, no, not you. Not you. Not you. All right. Who else would you say, from the edit that we saw, who would you say was not given enough credit? Well, like I said, Jeffro was making moves out there. They didn't show that at all. I don't know why they didn't show her starting the fire with Cass and Savro, because that yeah. was a big part of it. Yeah. So they didn't give Jeffro her credit. Um, they didn't give uh, who else? Trish, obviously, we all saw. We did see it, so we're giving her the credit. You know, we saw it from TV. Yeah. Um, I know what she was doing. She was she was really, you know, again, all of us couldn't get to where we are without the other. I don't care yeah. who you are in that game or what role you played in that game. We all got to where we got with the help of the other person. So everybody gets the credit, you know. Everybody gets credit. Would you want to say if somebody was overrated or not? I, I don't think uh, – I, I mean, you've seen the show. You've seen the show. Everybody yeah. got – everybody gets kudos, man. Everybody played a great game. And, you know, when people say, oh, yeah, Tony was stuck with dumb people and their alliance, you know, that's not the case, man. We were right. all We were all hard workers. We were all good game players. And we all wanted to win bad. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, even just, yeah, we're just seeing five percent of the time out there. We're not seeing the other ninety, ninety-five percent of the time where people are making moves and making strategy talk. So we're just right. seeing the five percent that they want to show us. Yeah, and well, a lot of people saying, you know, Tony, Tony, you know, Tony was playing it up for the cameras. Listen, I, I know what I look like. I, I, I didn't want to be on camera. I know, I, I know, I got a busted grill. I don't have a million dollar smile, even with a million dollars in my pocket. I have no hair, so I didn't want to be on camera. I was. I didn't even. I ignored the cameras. I was playing my game, but I gave these guys so much footage. I didn't stop on that island. So they have so much footage of me. So that's why you're gonna get more screen time of Tony because yeah, right. while people are sitting down, you know, relaxing, and they should be, I'm out there burning my energy up, killing right. myself. Right. Hey, so what'd your wife think of the beard and the hair? <laughs> she <laughs> she didn't even, she didn't even recognize me, man. She was like, <laughs> I, I don't. Actually, nobody recognizes me. You know, today I, I met some people that love Survivor, and they're like, you're not Tony. Yes, I am. You're not Tony, so I have to show my tattoo that I'm Tony. There you <laughs> go. You hey, know, one, really... one, more, one more question. Sorry, then I'll turn it back to you, Dwayne. Okay. What did you think the vote count was going to be after all the votes were casted? You, you know what? I thought it was going to – I thought – you know what, man? I thought it was 50-50. It was 5-4 my way or 5-4 the other way. And, again, like Tasha's the only one that didn't vote for me. And, you know, no hard feelings to her. I'm not going to say she was bitter. I'm going to say that I messed up. There was something yeah. that I did to Tasha that she didn't vote for me, so my bad, you know? Right. That's right. how I look at it. And if none of them voted for me, I would have said, shit, shoot. I got I to readjust how I played. I got to reassess it and see where I went wrong. So right. if the next time I go out there, I'm going to say, you know what? It was my fault. Nobody else's fault. My fault. Right. Well, I, you, back, back to the um, people say you were with a bunch of dumb people. I, I, don't, I don't hear that at all. What I'm hearing is this is one of the best cast ever with a lot of people who wanted to play the game, you know? Not well, everybody, but, I mean, when else have we had a final six where everybody's fighting to win in a final five and a final four? I mean, this was a great season. To win I, this season was a big accomplishment. I, I, I agree, Dave. I mean, Dwayne, I give myself credit, man. It was They were tough people they were tough players but you know there were some interviews where you you hear Tasha saying well if I had a Trish and I had a Wu I could have got just as far as Tony and and you know what it, it, it you know she, I don't know why she's doing that but it's not what's a Trish and a Wu they were there in the game with you you should have right. found your Trish and your Wu that's the case you know that's I fought real bonds with these people yeah so you know I mean these people were playing I mean you've seen Trish's strategic mind you've seen where Wu's mind was yeah in the end he dropped his guards a little bit but everybody was playing the game you right. know, everybody out there was playing the game, it, it, and, you know, I, I, it was really tough. Yeah. So were you even in the green room? I was in the watching? green room. Because we didn't yeah, see you. Yeah, you'll see. If you go back, you'll see it. If you re, if you go back to the to the watch it, I'm there. I'm sitting down on the sofa nice and low. Any you know, uh, in, any interesting stuff go on during the green room? Like, while you were watching, did they, like, you know, 
react to stuff. Because they say y'all were a close family, but is that true? Yeah, we know yeah, that's you know, not we, true. All of us are good, man. All of us are good. Cass, you know, like I said, the moment you saw us fighting out there, and you know me right now, I'm not bad-mouthing her. I'm just, I'm not agreeing with her moves. Right. Not everybody's moves are perfect. Mine weren't perfect. But when you make a move and, and you're, you're, you're admitting that there was, you're admitting to us that you made a move that you were going to do anyway, and to us, it's not strategic. So we don't agree with your move. We don't respect your move. So that's why I'm just saying that about Cass. But right. Cass had a moment, like I said, she was a real person. She talked about you know, a Christmas tree farm that she wants to get. And we had good relationships, man. She was giving us stories. She's saying she was socially awkward. But she was giving us so much stories. She was always telling us stories about her personal life where it was fun. You know, We all had a good time out there. We all get along. We all still get along. Even yeah. Sarah. You know, me and Sarah had a little bad beef you know, because... I'm impulsive. So she said something on Twitter or whatever she said, and I didn't agree with, and I went at her, and we got into a little spiel, but it's all good now. It's so water under the bridge. The game's over. We still care about each other like we did. You know, we're all close. Yeah, that wasn't the case at the finale. So since then, y'all have talked, and everything's good? We're good. You know, good. You know, if you're asking a specific question about one thing, yeah, she's still going to have, you know, she's still going to have her anger issues about it. Right, and so right. will I. But the same thing with Cass. But we put that to the side, we still get along with people. Right, right. Well, I gotta tell you, man, it was just a great. I mean, you you have had the privilege of being on one of the best seasons of Survivor ever. It's an honor, man. I mean, just it was such a good season. It's it's, it's an honor, man, and you know, and a lot of people they, they they all. I don't have look at Spencer. You know, he didn't even win the game, and he has like triple the followers on Twitter than I have. This yeah. he's a fan favorite, you know, but. It's it's the, it's the, it's 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 a natural human instinct, man, to to, to hate on the aggressor. Like right. I I don't know who I told somebody in the interview. When you're watching a nature channel, and you see the lion chasing down the gazelle. Yeah. Myself included. You're gonna root for that gazelle to get away. You don't want right. to see that lion, the aggressor, catch that that gazelle. But at the end of the day, the lion catches the gazelle. It devours the carnage. We all admit, saying, you know what? It was the nature of the beast. And right. that's what I want people to see. It was the nature of the game. I played right. the game, and I played it hard. I played it strong. I played it to win, and fortunately for me, I did win. Yeah. yeah we're, speaking of Twitter, Dwayne and I were talking the day after, and your account went from 11,000 to, I think, 13,000 in a matter of hours that we were talking. But um, but I want to thank you, though, for talking to us this season, especially since the beginning. Um, you never told us anything. We never asked anything. You were always giving us a hard time about our thoughts and our opinions and telling us just be patient. Wait till the next episode. Wait till the next show. And don't forget, and don't think that I've forgotten about your little prank that you pulled on me. Oh, yeah, that one. What, yes, when you're asking about how do I do I know anything about these exit interviews like <laughs> three months ago and how they went and how long you have to do them. <laughs> and, and I even told Dwayne, Dwayne, we picked the wrong horse. We're talking to the guy that's not even going to make the jury. And all of a sudden, <laughs> Dwayne's going, he pulled you, man. He yeah, got yeah. you good. I think, yeah. I think that was about the time when you were guys saying, that's it. Tony's done. He's got to be out the next – he's got to be oh, next man. episode. Yeah. So that's when I threw so that out there. I started, I started uh, keeping away from Twitter for a couple of you know, a couple of days. Yeah. I tweeted anything to make it look like I'm flying to L.A. So, you oh, know, man. it was all fun. I was still playing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you were. It was fun. And, you know, I, I – I'm I'm humbled. I mean, I I realize you're just you're just any other guy. You're a cop out of Jersey, but but what's but thank you for listening to our podcast and for being such a supporter of us. And uh, it's just kind of cool. You are the first winner we've ever had on That's the show. Awesome, man. Yeah, and you're our favorite winner. So awesome, yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. And I hope that hey, hey David, did I get you any points? Did you beat Dwayne's fantasy team? Now, now check this Not out. A chance. No, but it was it was closer than I thought it would be. Oh but, man! But he had like six people at one time, and I had you and Cass. <laughs> yeah, but he was so. giving you triple points. Yeah. I know. Thank the Lord for that. He did. But however, however, towards the end, when we when we were in our fun office pools, which is that rotate the weekly thing where you put points on people leaving, I um yeah. I went from Sarah to LJ to just. Threw my hat in the wind and picked Jeffrey for one week. That was ridiculous. And I said, you know what? I'm not picking Tasha because Dwayne's got Tasha and he's going to get a bunch of points. I'm going the other way and say, you know what? Tony's got all these idols. He's got he's got to be doing well at the end. So I threw all my points on you. I picked you to win late in the game. I threw all my closing points on you, all my 40 to win, all this, that, and the other. And I came all the way back from like 50th 
to score like number seven in our front office pools and put Dwayne in the dust. He did. So beat I, me I put all my chips on Team TV. That's right, my man. I did come back in that pool and win the front office pool over Dwayne. Beautiful. Yes. I'm glad that to hear that. That was awesome. That's great, man. <laughs> well, yeah, right, I mean, it's, it's been, it's been, like I said, man, it's, I mean, it's just an honor to even get on that game, never mind win right. it, and never mind to be on a season that great, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's just beautiful. But you've got to be tired of talking about it. And and uh, and not just tonight, since we're almost at three hours. Yeah, but three you've hours. Be t- <laughs> he should have said three hours. He's gone. Yeah. Wow. But uh, no, hey, no, you, that's you know, good. You don't get tired of it, man, because it's it's something you you enjoy. You know, I enjoyed it so well, much. So I'm really not tired of it. Well, good. I'm I am glad. Yeah, but Look, like be- I said, it's it's one game, and and you can ask me a hundred. I can give you a hundred different versions of that one game I played. You know. Right. So, Right sure. now, tomorrow, I'll do another podcast, and I'll tell them to hold something totally different, you know? <laughs> oh, wonderful. I yeah, feel no, so no, good no. about that. That's just a joke. But uh, no, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, from right. what, you know, you, you could put yourself back in the game, and you remember from day one, me shaking Cliff's hand, me me spying on them, listening to, to Lindsay talk about the bamboo, that I'm wasting bamboo trying to make a fire. I mean, I, you, it, everything just comes back to you, man. It's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. So did you tell us anything that you haven't told anybody else? Um, probably the chicken with Trish. There you uh, go, because I the, did post on Twitter that we were going to get some exclusive all content. Right. The fake idol that I gave Trish. Yes. That also wasn't there. The yeah, Sarah yeah. lie that I told Sarah that I had that was I had to make a fake idol. That's why she was so adamant that I didn't have idols. There you go. That, yeah. So it's a it's a lot of things. We, you know? we got three hours of content, man. Our friend Steve Helling over at People Magazine, he only got like eight questions. I mean, yeah, that's all he got. we got three hours of team. Yeah, team. I I met Steve, man. He's cool, but you know the yeah. most questions that they ask is the finals towards the end, like yeah. uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. But here it's good, man. We covered a lot of grounds, and I'm sure we still didn't cover a lot of stuff that if you guys think of later on, you know, tweet me, ask me the questions, I'll answer it. Because now the game's over, I could answer them. That's right. That's right. Well, hey, man, thanks for being on the show tonight. We want to. No uh, we'll be tweeting about this for the next week. All right. Sure, everybody knows. <laughs> any any questions from the fans? No, nobody wrote nothing. Well, you answered most of them. All let right. See, let me see if there's any others. Let me see. Any others, David? Um. Well, here's one. Why do you think? No. Who do you think was the best at puzzles? L.J. Cass, Spencer, or Sarah? Oh man. Well, they were all good, but I I, I mean I've seen L.J. work magic and I've seen Cass work magic, so I would say L.J. and Cass. All right. I got one. Spencer had said that it was uh, your idea to vote out Trish and that you got Wu to get Spencer and Cass on board. Is that true? Well, this is what happened. When I when I started thinking about the next challenge, I said to myself, you know what? Cass, I can't get rid of Cass. I need Cass because I'm taking her to the end. I know I could kill her in the votes. She's an easy kill. So I can't get rid of Cass at that moment. Trish wasn't going to be able to help me beat Spencer in the next challenge, but Wu was. So I went to Wu and I say, Wu, listen, man, what do you think about Trish, man? I think we're going to have to make a move. She, we get to the end with her. She beats us. you know. So I pitched that to Wu, and Wu says, hey, you know what, Tone? I was thinking the same thing. And now that I watched it on TV, you know, at first I didn't think he was thinking the same thing. I think he was just humoring me, going along with my plan. Yeah. But now that I've seen it on TV, I guess he was already in the mix, making that happen with Cass. So, so little did you know, keeping Cass was the best move because she ends up winning the next challenge. <laughs> You know that was game. another that, that was that was another thought that crossed my mind, but I didn't really keep her for that reason. But yeah. I was saying plus Cass could probably help in the puzzles. But no, that wasn't the main reason. The main reason was because I wanted to go with Cass because I thought that was an easy victory. But the main the, the only difference between Wu and, and Trish were both very likable, both have a chance of beating me. But Wu was more valuable to me at that point because he could help me beat Spencer in the next challenge, as right. opposed to I didn't think Trish could help. Right. Hey, ask him some of Lou's questions. Well, I got that. Um, do you think you had superior special skills in manipulating the others? I don't. I don't think so. I think I just. Uh, I just. Uh, just took advantage of the circumstances that were in front of me. I took advantage of what I knew people liked the most, like with the cop thing with Sarah, like the honor thing with a uh, woo. You know. So I, I don't think I had more skills than anybody else. I just well, think for, that I was more. Somebody that's not sociable that doesn't like meeting new people. You sure did make a lot of inroads with a lot of different people. Yeah, well, well, you don't. Know, I don't like it, but I do it. Just like my job, I don't like wrestling with people that have bed bugs on them, but I do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. You just got to do it. That, that that was my job out there. I had to do that. I had to interact with them. You know, I had to be interpersonal with them. 
So is there going to be a Spy Shack t-shirt or a Team TV t-shirt? You know what? I, I got a lot of people that, are, that that have been tweeting me because I did all those campaign ads. So yeah. I started putting some stuff on t-shirts. So, you know, I might make it open to the public soon. All right. Hey, I heard about the avocados and the peanut butter. Was there anything else you put on protein-wise before you started? Um, the, the fat weight was just a protein shake. So I was drinking 4,000 calories in proteins alone. And I was eating like five, literally five avocados a day and a, and a jar of peanut butter every other day. I would eat all that for wow. the good fats, for fuel. But I was, my intake was 6,000 calories a day for almost a month. Wow. Wow. And then I went down to six calories a day. <laughs> hey, Will, our giant ninja, wants to know what you think of SpencerBledsoe.com. Oh, man. Did you guys know what happened with that? Oh, I know what happened. Yeah, we, we know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was great, man. You know, Spencer's texting me back and forth. He's like, hey, what do you think I should tell this guy? I said, Spencer, I think you should do it. You know, meanwhile, he didn't know it was me. But I gave him back all his money. You know, everything is fair square. So to explain, you bought that domain name. Oh, yeah. All right. So Thank this you. is what happened, just yeah. in case people don't know. So what happened was I, I bought TonyVlacos.com and made my website from GoDaddy.com. That's where you could buy the .coms. So then I text. I said, I, I went to online and I purchased SpencerBledsoe.com. <laughs> So, you know, it was only 13 bucks. I said, you know what, let yeah. me buy this. So then I text I text Spencer and I say, hey, Spencer, I just got my domain name, TonyBlackos.com. You don't think you should get one just in case, you know, you might want to do something? He's like, nah, I don't care about that. I said, Spencer, listen, you say that right now, but you don't know what's going to happen a year from now when you want to come up with something. He's like, all right, you're right, Tony. Let me check it out, especially for $13. It's, it's a good investment. So he goes and he says, oh, my God, somebody has my name. I'm like, oh, man, I knew it. I told you, Spencer. They saw you were popular on the game, and they probably bought your website thinking that you're going to buy it from them for a lot of money. And he was like, well, I could I could negotiate with them using GoDaddy as a middleman. I said, you better make an offer. So then Spencer responds to GoDaddy, and GoDaddy sends me a letter. and says, Mr. Anthony Blackos, Spencer Blesso is interested in buying your domain name, SpencerBlesso.com. How much do you want to sell it for? And I put fifteen hundred. <laughs> so Spencer texts me back. He's like, "This crazy nut is telling me fifteen hundred dollars." And I say, "Yo, Spencer, I think you should give it to him." And he's like, "Hell no, I ain't giving it to him." So to make a long story short, we were negotiating back for like two months. So he got it down to a hundred dollars, and I said, "You know what? I'll accept a hundred dollars." So I took the hundred dollars from him. He sent it to GoDaddy. GoDaddy paid me. I cashed the money. I put the hundred dollars in the envelope. And it, with a, I printed out the copies of me owning the SpencerBlesso.com. I put an envelope. I put his name on it, and I gave it to him when I saw him. And I said, hey, Spencer, don't read this until I, I leave. <laughs> Later, my phone is blowing up. You got me, you dirty bastard. <laughs> it was hysterical. That is really awesome. Yeah, I played him out good. <laughs> hey, uh, here we got a, a YouTube comment from Gordimer N. A cast fan here, so agree that Tony need not apologize for his game. Did not always appreciate Tony's aggression, but admired that he stayed true to himself. A great game, Tony, and a deserving champion. Congrats. As wow. for Morgan, yeah, so, you know, a cast fan who is giving you props. Nice. Uh, congrats. As for Morgan, she dismissed more than Cass. In the earlier episodes, she made fun of LJ and Jeremiah and the merge episode, Alexis. We tend to forget because she received an invisible negative edit. Spencer was no choir boy in his confessional either. Pretty much anyone who went against him received a snark along the lines of brain dead weasel. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. But anyway, so congrats on a great game. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. I got yeah. one more from Will. I, this was a really good question. Was there any point in the game when you thought you'd lost control? Lost control of the game, so to speak. To, to be honest with you, I, there was never a point. I made a conscious effort to keep putting in my head that I'm not in control of the game, even when I knew I was. So that's the only way you keep your guards up, man. You know, like LJ, the second he put his guards down, he was gone. You know, it's like at no point in the game did I say to myself, I'm in control of this game, even with the idols. I didn't care. So so I guess to answer Will's question, I, I, never, even, I never even put myself in a position to say I'm in control of the game for me yeah. to think that I'm not no longer in control. So the whole time, right from the day one, man, from day one, I just it was just like keep my guards up, never put them down, and you have to make a conscious effort to do that because if you don't constantly tell yourself, it's like a dolphin. Do you know dolphins are the only animals in the world that have to make a conscious effort to breathe? Did you guys know that? I did no. not. Uh -uh. If a dolphin doesn't make a conscious effort to breathe, he drowns. Wow. Imagine that. 
I'm glad yeah. I don't have to make a conscious effort to breathe. Well, but I'm saying, but imagine that, that's that. a great way to play, to always be on the defensive, always know that they are coming after you and always know that you have to move first. LJ said the comfortable word. Ironically enough, that was the episode he left. Yep, and, and, that's, and that's where my police experience and my training comes in handy. I mean, it, you know, they, they, they train you. We're, we're trained, and we're, like, trained to identify a theft, you know. And not a theft. Identify a threat. Once right. you identify that threat, it's a race to the trigger. All right? It's as simple as that. And action always beats reaction. So once I identified my threats, it was time for them to go. I needed to act on it, and I needed to act on it quick. So I didn't care about paper strategy where this is not the time to flip. This is not the time to go against your alliance. I didn't care about all that. It was situational. I identified my threat in LJ, seeing him you know, making packs with Trish and Jeffrey and Cass. It was time for him to go. So a day-by-day, day day, hour-by-hour strategy. Absolutely. That that's the only way you can play that game. It always changes. Again, it's like the stock market. What who's valuable to you at this point is not that valuable to you the next moment, you know? Right. So whoever was valuable to me, I kept them with me. I didn't care about alliances. I didn't care about that. I only cared about the voting block. And if Trish wasn't gonna vote with me, guess what? I'm gonna go somewhere else and get the vote from somebody else. And I did that with Spencer, Jeremiah, and Tasha. Yeah. If you ever did play a game, would you change anything? Situational. Yeah. Could there's, you change anything? Yeah. There's it nothing to change. Situational. It's situational. There's nothing. There's nothing textbook about Survivor. There's nothing vanilla about Survivor. You're not going into the Survivor to play a vanilla game. I know I will get my hands dirty, but I will make a conscious effort not to get them bloody, and that's what I did. All right. All right. So, uh, Tony, is is your phone nearby? If so, check your text messages. <laughs> hey, does uh, Will have any more questions, David? You should ask me that two questions again. I, I think, no, Tony's really covered a lot of these questions because they asked about who he takes to the final, does Cass get any votes, um, talked about the weight loss. So um, nothing else from, from our friend Will? Hey, David, that's my, the... David, that's my cue to tell you who is Will and why do we care. <laughs> <laughs> because Will is a giant ninja. He is twice your size but same amount of hair. I've seen him. I've seen Big Will, and he's a fan of mine, so I love him. We were yeah. talking to, uh, we were, we were talking with uh, Steve Helling a couple of, I guess you probably listened to that, to, to that recap, and uh, and I kept asking some of Will's questions, and Steve goes, "Who is Will, and why do we care?" <laughs> well, brutal. I guess, I guess that means I'm supposed to read Will's comment. It's official. Tony is my favorite survivor of all time. Oh, I loved watching him all season long. He was an absolute joy. Oh. Gosh. There were numerous times when I questioned his moves, and it looked like his game ended when Wu won the final immunity challenge, but he convinced Wu that, that Wu had to take Tony to the end to justify his I played with honor argument. I'll admit I was pretty convinced after the final trouble that Wu was going to win it. Once again, the editors got me. Tony winning was perfect, ending to the best season in Survivor history. Con congrats, Team TV. And that oh, really thank awesome. you, Will, man. I appreciate that. And Will's always been with me, man. He's always been behind me. That's even right. Even when you guys worried. <laughs> that was Dwayne. Hey, that hey, was Dwayne. <laughs> Will is also known for saying, I love me some Cass. Yes, hey, he is. Listen, he I, again, man, Cass, played, Cass played her game. Yes. Not necessarily everybody's going to agree with what everybody does there. A lot of people don't agree with what I did out there either, you know? Doesn't yeah. make, doesn't, you know, again, I'm not knocking her as a person. I just, I'm just knocking the game. Absolutely, absolutely, man. And, and you know, we're going to have Cass on in just a couple of weeks, so feel free to listen and I, leave well, your own. I and, will listen. And uh, leave your YouTube comments. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, again, man. She, I'm she playing, knows, man. She knows, ask us. She knows we shared a lot of good moments out there together. You know, oh, like yeah. I said, when she was a norm, when she was just a woman, beautiful. But when she went in, back into the game mode, oh, I yeah. didn't like it at all. Right. Well, there, there you go. You know, you you play the game and or and you go back to life. All right, man. Well, golly, any any anything you want to say to us, Tony, before we sign off? You sound like the producers now. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I would say, well, I could go on and on for another three hours. And they're like, no, no, you don't. Get out of here. What was your favorite day out there? What was your favorite one day? Was it the last day, obviously? Uh, you, you, I mean, you even see me on the last day when I found that clue in that basket. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. So I yeah. didn't stop, man. I didn't stop was, the game. That I was awesome. I found a clue to a mirror. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> and you know, I mean, What did yeah. you think it could have been? I mean... I told you. You didn't hear me what I said on the confessional. I said I thought it could have been an advantage to get an extra vote. Extra vote, yeah. yeah. Really, Listen, really. That game, that game always. There's always twists and turns, man. You never know what to expect. So when I found that that little thing there, what else could it be? You know, like yeah. it's got to be something beneficial. Yeah, but if it's an extra vote for Tony, come on. Yeah. How much more? Hey, yeah. you know what? 
<laughs> or how about how about you don't have to go to Final Tribal, you win. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Woo will we'll drive you there. <laughs> That would have been awesome, man. But overall, let me tell you guys, overall, man, I think everybody in that season, like you guys already know, everybody knows we all played a game, man. We all played a good yeah. game, all yeah. of us. Oh, it should have been you get the right to veto one jury member. You tell them to yeah. sit back down. You don't want to hear anything they have to say. Oh, hey, man. we are giving Prope some ideas. There you go. If only he'd listen. Yeah, no, he, he doesn't care about us, Dwayne. No, he doesn't. <laughs> uh, let's see. Doll. Dally Man wants to know, do you think LJ would have won if he got you out before you got him? That's that's you know that's hard to that's hard to answer, man. Yeah, because you got him out early. Yeah, minute by minute, you know, like I, he could have got a lot of power. You know, he could have got a lot of power. Like I said, he had he was he was solidifying alliances with the girls. You know, I seen him with Trish, and Trish confirmed that. Like, yes, he was talking to yeah. me about him three. You know, and I didn't know that was going on, but that's my right. point. When you see somebody talking with somebody, you gotta assume the worst, right. and you gotta act on it. And apparently you know he's. What? Go ahead. Because you've seen them when they get when they get voted off, they're like, I should have just jumped a little yes. bit quicker than he did. Yes. And that's yes. The, that, uh, action versus reaction. That's right. all it is. And apparently LJ is still solidifying a lot of girl relationships. Yeah, no. Uh, LJ, let me. He's a sweetheart, man. That guy is real, a really nice. Uh, Jeremiah, everybody, man. They're just. Yeah. Genuine people, man. And that's right. what hurts, you know. Yeah, I know. So Bethany wants to know how much Survivor did you watch before you went on? Um, you know what? I watched Survivor the first season. I watched it throughout the, the years, but I was never a student of it. I watched it for its entertainment purposes, its entertainment value. I laughed at it. I loved it. I cheered for it, but I never dissected the game. You know, I don't right. sit down and dissect it because you can't. Because what 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 works for this season doesn't necessarily work for the next season. What works for Dwayne is not going to work for David. It's not going to work right. for Tony. Right. Everything is situational, man, person by person. Yeah. What what season or what moment was it that told you that you wanted to get on the show? Um, I I believe it was Russell, the Russell seasons. When was it? As twenty season twenty? Yeah, around nineteen, I think. He was yeah. Samoa and twenty was he was. Yeah, in. around those seasons, I was like, you know what, man, I I I need to get on the show. I need, I really need to get on the show. And I, in my bio, I said I could be as devious as Russell and I could be as slick as Boston Rob. And right. that's I know how I am. I know if I have to, whatever it is I do, I give it a hundred percent. If it's to be honorable, I'm going to be 100% honorable when I'm in the court of law and I take an oath to tell the truth nothing but the truth. It's 100% the truth because that's the nature of that game. You know, that's it. Right. You have to be truthful. In Monopoly, in poker, everything, ha you have to play the game how it's meant to be played. Right. And from that point on, I said, you know, and I wanted to get on the show and I wanted to make a video and I kept saying to myself, you know what? There's no way they watch these videos. There's no way they're going to watch 30,000, 40,000 videos. you got to know somebody in CBS. I know somebody's cousin. I know somebody's brother. I know somebody's sister. There's no way they're going to watch the video. So that put me off for a couple of years. And then I finally, I said, you know what, Let's, let me just go for this. Let me just make a video. I made a quick, simple video in this chair that I'm sitting in right now, watching the thing and just doing my video. And sure enough, they called me, and they were filming June 2012. Wow. In June 2012 is when I was getting married, so there was no way I was going on the show. I told them, I'm sorry, i got to defer it. So I deferred the first time they called me because I was getting married. They, I guess they blacklisted me because I kept emailing them, I keep texting them, I keep calling them, and they just kept ignoring me. I didn't hear nothing back from them until like nine months later, they called me up and they say, hey, Tony, you're still interested in playing? We might have a slot for you. I was like, hell yeah, I'm interested in playing. But like, now, what, you didn't I, get all my emails? <laughs> yeah, but now now I, had, I, I was thinking I had to defer it again because I have a baby. I had a, a three-month-old baby when they called me. So it was just bad timing. My wife didn't get to enjoy none of this stuff. She didn't get to go on the, on, on, on the Love's One visits. She didn't get to yeah. see the finale. She didn't, you know, it was just bad timing. So June 2012, is that Kara Moen, Fans vs. Favorites 2? I, you know what? I don't even know. Yeah, Maybe I, it was 25, I think. Yeah, because Blood vs. Water was right after that. Oh, 25 was Philippines. I think. It, was, it, was, it was the one in June 2012, whatever they filmed June 2012. Yeah. Where's so my cable in you? And that's what the one you? that I was supposed to be on. So, again, who knows what would have happened if I was on that one, you know? So I, yeah. everything is for a reason. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. I think that was Philippines because Blood vs. Water would have been the first of the summer that you just filmed. Because yes. you were the second group to film of a summer. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't get to see yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. So what have yeah. been, been Philippines with scooping? Yep, and it, all yeah, all those guys. And, and it was oh. totally... So I wonder who took my place in that one. I don't know. You know they have a slot for everybody, for every Probably character. Probably some guy named Malcolm, because you guys look alike. You get the same type of hair and build. <laughs> yeah, and... yeah, you know what? Yeah, we do. Just like me and LJ look alike. 
Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know they cut they they edit that out because I said you know what when I look in the mirror I see LJ but a much better you know but no I said what did I say I said looking at LJ is like looking at the mirror but he's just much better looking than me they cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, no. So so, uh, like, and when I seen Blood versus Water, how they were burning the clues. When I just came back from a season where I was looking for every single clue, I was like, yes, what are they doing? I know. What yeah. are they doing? I couldn't yeah. believe it. Hey, so so when did you? This is a little self-serving, but when did you find us, Survivor Talk? Um, I, I believe after I went on, after I went on the season, that's when I started looking at everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. So cool. before before I went on. I wasn't into podcasts. I wasn't into blogs. I wasn't into Twitter. I didn't even know. I didn't even this phone. I don't know if you can see this phone. It's an iPhone. This is the first time in my life I got an iPhone because of this show, because of Survivor. Right. I right. said I need to keep in contact with fans and see what's going on. Yeah. And, and you know, I wasn't into all this stuff. And then no. when I got on the show, I, I I kept googling Tony Vlaco's podcast, Tony Vlaco's blog. I wanted to see what anybody's saying about me. I used to go right. crazy. Uh, Stephen Fishback had some bad words I had to say to him because I I was impulsive. I wrote something bad about him, then I regretted it, and the next day I tried to correct it. Yeah. It was just it just consumed my whole life. This thing. That's why now I just yeah. want to take a chill pill. I want right. to get it out of my system. I, I want to go back to life. I got a new baby coming on this way any day now. Right. See, that's how small small we are. Because when you said bad stuff about us, we just brushed it off and said that's fine. We agree. <laughs> yeah. no, but, but again, with the Rob has a podcast. I never heard him before. I never seen any of the blogs. Steve Helling. I never seen. I never seen anything before. This is, right. you know, because like I said, I watched the show. I sat down eight o'clock at night with my wife. We with my fiance at the time. We just sat down. We watched the show and enjoyed it. That's all. Right. No big yeah. deal. But now that I was on, it was a big deal, huge deal. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, man. Well, we th we thank you for 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 being on the show and for. Man, you gave us over three hours. Thank you so much. I'll give you three more, man. Well, <laughs> my son apparently has a busted car at Chick-fil-A, and it's 1130, and he's been waiting on me for two and a half hours. I didn't oh, know. Oh, wow. <laughs> Over here, it's 1 o'clock in the morning almost. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm, I'm at 1240 right now. Yeah, yeah 1240. So, so uh, apparently I whenever how I... People, how many people did we lose from the beginning? We haven't. It's just grown. Really? Yeah, well, it it it's been a steady number. I won't tell you the number until I it stop broadcast, and then we'll talk for a few minutes afterwards. All but right. it's but it's a good number. All right, good, so, good. Lots of people watching, and you know, hopefully they'll they'll find out about our show and they'll and they'll stay, and they'll keep it's a, watching. It's a, it's a great show, man, guys. You guys got a great show, and what makes it more fun? It's like you guys are friends, and you just just shoot in the breeze, exactly like what you have. Shoot in the breeze is great. Uh, the slice by the pizza, all that yeah. stuff, is great stuff, man. <laughs> yes, well, thank you very much. Yeah. And, uh, and if you're up for it next season, you know we may have. If you're, if you want to uh, be a guest on our show a couple times or one or whatever, you know we'll be up for it. And I'm sure you'll have a lot of people wanting you on their show since you're the winner. But you're more than welcome to come on our show anytime you want. Appreciate that, Dwayne, man. And that, and that, and this is a hey, Dave, and this is a person that I want you, I wanted you to waterboard in the beginning of the season. Remember That's that? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Next time I I'll, see him, we'll take care of that. I'm All gonna right. have to go back and listen to our uh, preview or who the heck are these people podcast. Oh and yeah, see what in the world we said about Just you. Just remember who picked Tony for our fantasy challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Might have been second to last, but who picked Tony for the fantasy challenge? But if I'm not mistaken, I think you compared me to Shamar. I think you called oh. me a Shamar. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, I can't wait to go back and listen to all that. <laughs> One of you guys called me a Shamar. You told me I was going to get medevac because I couldn't eat enough and I was going to be starving. Oh, that was probably Andy. Andy. That was David. Andy Baker. That was Andy Baker. So that no, was. that was you, David. <laughs> uh, and, Andy's cool too, man. I, I watched, I, I, you know, again. I, I just discovered Andy because of my season. It, it, all, you, the guys that, that put so much time and effort into this, man, mad props to you guys. Yeah. It's, 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 it's awesome, man. All, all the blogs, how they write everything. so They articulate everything so precise. And, you know, based on what you see, I'm like, wow. Just only on what they see, they're so close to the truth, you know. It's yeah. like it was a, it's a lot of stuff on point. Yeah, I, I've I've often wondered how y'all think about it. Whenever you're listening to a podcast and you hear us speculate about stuff that you already know the answer to, it's, it's yeah, no, be... no, it's 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 fun, but sometimes also you know aggravating. Was like, how do you not see this? How do you not? Yes. Because a lot of people they get blinded by their favorites. You know what right. I mean? So right. if, if if Cass is your favorite, you're gonna you're gonna try to justify her moves, and you're not gonna justify somebody else's moves. You right. know what I mean? So it's, right. it's always like that. Favoritism is a big part, and you oh, get sure. to the point where it's, was that. I said sure. I was just agreeing with you. Oh yeah. So so you know. So and, and, and it's that's that's a fact of life, man. That's oh, it. You yeah. can always root for somebody you like. You're not gonna root for the person you don't like. And that's why a lot of people ain't rooting for me. 
Yeah. Well, plus you were on David's Survivor Fantasy team. Oh yeah. Well, right, man. Once he found that idol, man, it's all Team TV. Let's go, more idols. He he would tweet me. Did I get you more points? Did I get you more points? Yeah. yeah. Fun times out there, man. Fun times. Yeah. Again, I never took anything personal out there. I went out there on a mission, and mission accomplished, man. Thank yeah. God. Well, hey, we want to thank everybody for watching on, on YouTube and for listening. Please start your Amazon shopping using our links on our website. And uh, if you want to become a patron, uh, you can do that too or give through PayPal. We really appreciate it. It's been a blast, and we will talk to you all later. Probably play some Spy Shack on the way out. So adios, everybody. That's all I got. How about you, Dave? I'm good. All right. See you. See you. The Spy Shack is a little hidden place where we can spy together. The Spy Shack Tony. Spy Shack Tony. Spy Shack. That's where Tony's at. Spy Shack. That's where Tony's at. Tony. Sneaking, Tony is a listening, wearing next to nothing cause it's hot as a mug. The whole shack shimmies cause Tony is a moving around and around and around and around. Everybody's talking, Tony is a listening baby. Todd doesn't know, Tony wants to get sad. Everybody's talking, Tony is a listening baby. Private little shack, private little spa shack. Look at my biceps, much bigger than you's, and I'm about to hear woo. I've got me a spot where I can be sneaky, so come on, and we can spot on Lindsay. The Spy Shack is a little hidden place where we can spy together. Spy Shack Tony. The Spy Shack Tony. Spy Shack Tony Spy Shack, Spy Shack, oh, Tony baby, Spy Shack. Pong, pong, pongs, make the door, baby. A little more sturdy, Tony. Pong, pong, pongs, make the door, baby. I can't hear you. Pong, Tony Spy Shack, that's where it's at. Spy Shack, Tony Spy Shack, Tony Spy Shack, Tony Spy Shack. There'll be Spy Shack, Tony Spy Shack. Watching at the Spy Shack.